Welcome back for episode 12 of Focus Fire Chat, recorded live on January 6, 2016. This is your host, Blue, along with our co-host, Justin. Justin. And Willie. I don't know what that was. Ow! <laughs> we also have with us tonight the founder of the Dames of Destiny and Safe Gamers, and a co-host of Guardian Radio, as well as one of our dearest friends, Bell Bunny. Hi. Our topic for this episode <laughs> is a basic look at hunters. Before we start the show, I want to just run through some quick notes real fast. Our last chat was about the Guardian races. If you missed that and have any interest in hearing our thoughts, please be sure to check out our Podbean site at focusfirechat.podbean.com for archives of all our previous chats. Just as a side note, we did actually break 300 listens, which is really big for us. We actually weren't expecting that to happen this fast. We only have, I think, 10 episodes loaded up there. So thank you, guys. Uh, Just thank you. That's an immense honor. Thanks, as Mom. <laughs> Thanks, Mom. <laughs> as many of you I'm already know. I've listened 299 uh, times. You know. Yeah. I was trying to be <laughs> serious. All Justin's mom. That's I'm all. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> Off the rails. <laughs> Off the rails already. As many of you already know, Focus Fire Chat is a cross community gathering where the intent is to offer a week long, in depth view of a particular subject from within the lore of Destiny. This chat begins every Tuesday morning and runs until the following Tuesday with topics decided by the group via a poll that begins every Friday and ends on the Tuesday morning of the new chat. Every Wednesday at about 10 p.m. Central, we get together to stream a recap of the previous week's chat for everyone who was unable to participate. The topic for the next week's chat is already been decided, and it's going to be the Amakara and the Worms. It's going to be a fun one. Um, I believe that's the Ahamkara. Ahamkara? Yeah, I was like, what's an Aram? It's, a, it's Aham. 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 You know what? <laughs> a ham sandwich. You added an R whatever. that I don't think is there. Aham. <laughs> Aham. 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 Whatever I want. You put and the you emphasis just, on the wrong syllable. Oh, my gosh. Funny See, looking dragons. Ham tacos. We'll just ham tacos this is going to be an awesome episode. So let's go about hunters. <laughs> I have right. the card right here. You have the card? Hunter. All right. Introduction by um, Willie. All righty. Guardian classes. Hunter. Our old world's grown feral. Rabid beasts with teeth of rust and ruin. But such beasts are meant to be tamed or broken. Hunters stalk the wilderness beyond the city, harnessing the light to reclaim the secrets of our lost worlds. They are daring scouts and stealthy killers, experts with knives and precision weapons. Hunters blaze their own trails and they write their own laws. Which makes them sound like the badasses of Destiny, really, but uh, we all Hunter know that Titan race. is the master class. Yeah. Titan master class, <laughs> master of race. course. Hunter yeah, master the races, race. Um, the races were last week, Justin. These are class. <laughs> I'm just, Get oh, with I'm the sorry. program, son. Um, <laughs> Dude. Uh, uh-huh. And uh, anybody who plays Destiny knows, you know, when we uh, when we first started playing, if you started as a hunter... Or played just vanilla Destiny because you know I, I made the other two classes after still in vanilla. Um, as far as being masters with the blade, you have the blade dancer, of course, which was way too OP. That's a story for another time. And then, of course, there's a golden gun. So, I mean, these guys were already pretty versatile. Um, they also are the first ones out there. They want to see what's out in the frontier before anybody else, which is kind of ironic because one of the most popular sto- hunter stories takes place in a, a, what I feel is like a wild, wild west, uh, you know, new frontier. You know, you see like some He's of the characters from, being from the beginning. Oh yeah, no. let me let me not go there. Go ahead and take it let me, away. Hey, how about this? Why don't yeah. you why don't you queue up queue up the golden gun card and I'm gonna walk through a brief just like a brief history that I was able to compile um while you pull that up. So the first thing is hunters were responsible for going into the wild to find survivors after the collapse and escorting them into the protection of the walls of the last city. So as such, this class has come to learn how to live more by their own laws than any other laws. They learn the ways, and the way they learn it is through what we call what they're called handbooks, which are passed down from hunter to hunter. In the grimoire, we know of three handbooks, and we'll get into them just in a little bit. But I just really I had put together a couple historical events that actually kind of stand out within with 
particular emphasis on the hunters. And we'll we'll start with the uh, the rangers, which which was led by a individual. We assume it's a female because of the name uh, Ayane Takanome, I think. Nailed, nailed it. it. Yes. I, it. I actually pronounced something correct. <laughs> Everyone just stop. We're done. We're done. We can go yeah. home. Um, so so the, the, this group was not guardians. They were not guardians at all. Um, they were a group of snipers, actually. And they just kind of took it upon themselves to secure the roads that led to the city. Now, the rangers were eventually replaced by the guardians. Um, the pilgrim guard was actually one of the big orders of titans. What well, actually the first Titan order of class. yeah the first order of titans was the pilgrim guard, and then hunters also. And there is actually we have a quote in the grimoire from I think it's Chioko May, who was a ranger, that did say that even so after the guardians began to replace their group, many began to view the rangers' existence as a myth. But the residents of the city will always remember. And I have there's uh, two items in question. There's the t- Takanome armor, and then the uh, cloak in her name. And both of that that's kind of where you get the confirmation that the rangers a weren't guardians, and also that they kind of got replaced by the guardians. And then we come to Shinobu and the six coyotes. Now. This is like one of the most sought after segments of lore, and there is nothing. There is one, no, wait, two items in the entire grimoire that mention it, and they literally don't even actually mention it. They just have the six coyotes. Well, one of them is called the Legend of the Six Coyotes, and the other one is Shinobu's Vow. Shinobu was a member of the six coyotes. We know nothing about the six coyotes other than Shinobu was a member of one of them. We know that they were legendary hunters, so they were guardians, and they were the first scouts that went beyond the Cosmodrome wall. Um, we also know that Shinobu vow, made a vow, apparently, to protect every or protect all the civilians, even even in light of her not having the gear to do so. It's actually a Shinobu's vow, and then that's it. So. I wanted more. I, 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 yeah, Bungie, please give us more information on that because they sound amazing. And then the and last, hey, you yeah, want me to go awesome. into the gunslinger and the? Not and yet. The not yet. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. We're getting there. I have one more. One more little tidbit. Uh, Saint Fourteen's vigil. That paying as a person. Oh my good god! You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, Blue. I'll sh- I'll shut up now. Go cloak, ahead, buddy. Cloak, uh, my last my last piece before we start talking about the, sun, the subclasses is the the event of Saint Fourteen's Vigil, which is uh, what happened after Twilight Gap and when the city believed that Saint Fourteen had died. We know we know from reading the Grimoire that that's not the case, but the city had obviously obviously been led to believe that. He was gone. Um, there is a cloak it's called the Cloak of Sky Pillar, in which it details out that the entire reason that the city was able to hold the vigil that they were able to do so peacefully was because hunters culled the wilds around the city. Um, so basically, a group of hunters got together, went out, and killed everything within, I have no idea how far, but far enough that they could have a vigil in peace for one of their biggest heroes. That being said, I'm going to go, we're going to start talking about the subclasses, and I kind of want to hear Belle's thoughts on the subclasses. We're going to kind of toss her a surprise. Oh. <laughs> okay, what about them? Which which subclass is your favorite subclass? Okay, so I've always run Gunslinger, like 99% of the time, until Night Stalker came out, and then I kind of get obsessed with that, but it might just be because there's a bow and it's purple. Um... But no, also because like I really like the fact that it it finally took the other two subclasses to me kind of emphasize the whole like lone wolf feeling around hunters and the fact that Night Stalker finally kind of made them more of that support class, like actually working with the rest of their team. I thought was really interesting to me. Um, but I've always kind of been a gunslinger. Just I, I don't I don't know. I like throwing knives. <laughs> There's nothing more satisfying than literally just like killing somebody by sticking a knife in their face from a long distance away. But <laughs> no, that is 
that's it. Every time, every time I melee from range and a knife doesn't fly out, I'm a little sad inside. Um, it just it, it bothers me. The sn- the smoke bomb is good, but the knife there's nothing. There's I can't no play other classes. I tried starting a warlock and. I couldn't do it because every single time that I would be a distance from an enemy, I would try to throw a knife, and there was no knife to throw, and I just, I rage oh. quit being a warlock. Did we just become best friends? Oh, yeah. Oh. I thought we already were. That, that just happened. <laughs> and ironically, I think Willie has the golden gun queued up. I was actually trying to bring up other tabs, but I do or have that should. one right here. <laughs> I have, or he should. <laughs> See, I'm I, trying to get I even, main tabs I even up. like no. built that segue up because I knew Bell would Blue, mention there, Golden there's Gun. A thing so. I'm, I'm, well, there's I've a thing I'm going to ask people to like tweet us about. Um, yeah. You know, it's something that we have been arguing about the whole week. Oh god, who's been arguing? No one argues. So, talk. Oh. oh, all right. There, there's been fairly heated conversations about a certain topic. That I'll bring up later. So I was just okay. looking for all the bullet points for oh, not yeah. only my That's side, but also the other side because I want an honest opinion from the people when it's brought up. Okay. Um, but so moving on, we'll go with I gunslingers have, first. No, go ahead, Justin. Do you have a Willie? Uh, do you want gold gunslinger or golden gun? Let's do gunslinger and then. Which one gun. do you want, buddy? <laughs> I, I want both. Somebody Either. just read something. Something. Well, <laughs> gunslinger. Oh, all right. <laughs> A uh, gunslinger, a lone wolf who lives for the perfect shot. In the end, doesn't it all come down to you and your gun? Don't see much else to say about it. That's just the truth. And that sounds a lot like Kate said that to me. But that's true. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. The the golden gun, is just a one hitter quitter, with three shots in it. So it's it's pretty op. It, it was my. That, that, that's actually in the card. It's pretty op. It's, it's like, pretty op. <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's where the in symbiote the card. give you another shot. Um, yeah, it it is my my favorite, probably my favorite subclass all around. I run Night Stalker um, a lot now, but I, I definitely can't wait love till we do Titans. Titans. Uh, easy Gator, he's going to be he's going to be grumbling this entire time. You know, <laughs> there's always one of them. I'm, not, I'm never been a hunter. I have a hunter. Okay. Um, max light level for my hunters like three twelve. It's not like I haven't given it a shot. Respectable. It's just I'm not a hunter guy. I'm a titan. Well, um, you know what they say. There's there's actually difficulty settings in Destiny. You have warlock, which is easy. Titan, which is eh, medium, and then hunter, which is difficult. So we, the hunters the just well, the hunters are just playing it on the difficult setting. Except, oh my except goodness, during really? when Taken King one of first people. came out, when Taken King first came out, there was a glitch, and, and accidentally Titans dropped down to like super easy mode. If if you oh, were yeah, running with your hammer, Just, yeah. Okay, so. yeah. And first off, let me say, yes, I did use that exploit <laughs> once. What? I will be honest. Wait, wait what do you mean? I was on the exploit. Like you actually ran with a hammer because that was the exploit. It was just having a hammer. Oh wow! <laughs> really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Let's talk about the vanilla <laughs> Destiny exploits of the Arc Blade that lasted forever and would never die. I did not Arc Blade because or, I did not believe in it. So, but and we won't then even the Golden Gun, of course, lasts like what a whole minute if you don't fire a shot. Like, uh, oh and, no, it doesn't oh, last yeah. that long at all. <laughs> believe me, Justin, it lasts and, way Justin too and I long. were we, Justin and I were trying to take screenshots of it for the, and another argument that we were having. That does not last a minute. But everybody yeah, it does not knows last for a fact long. that when it came down to trials, I mean, yeah, you could do it as a Titan. You could definitely do it as a Warlock because, I mean, there there were self res Warlocks everywhere, right. especially with that Firebolt grenade. Like, it was just <laughs> insane. That, that Firebolt grenade didn't need a nerf, but if you weren't running a, uh, a Sunsinger Warlock, you were definitely running a Gunslinger. Because and you know why? You'll, because they have you'll take really the cool whole team out because it's OP. That's why. Well, that's um, true. Except that I also would say that like the best combination is I hate to say it is it would be a titan and a gunslinger because if you have the bubble, especially if you have two bubbles at the same time, oh, yeah. it's it's you can feed off of each other really well. Um, yeah, it wasn't in you, trials, but it was in another. Just I think it was when you joined the. You, you would need people stupid enough to shoot the bubbles, though. Um, you would <laughs> no. you would need titans that were smart enough to put on uh, gift of the void, so you could get the extra bubbles while your bubbles being shot. 
<laughs> and you would also need people dumb enough to actually continuously shoot those bubbles. <laughs> so wait, you would need and smart so, titans and then other other titans against them, and then you're going right. to get uh, However, I'm sorry, we're talking uh, about hunters. Right? Focus <laughs> fire. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yes, fine. Golden gun. You know, you used to shoot those things. Also as a known as gun. super OP thing. Um, draw a hand cannon burning with solar light and loaded with three rounds of sunfire. Aim steady and keep your wits about you. You are a gunslinger. <laughs> this is what you live for. To wreck people in trials because it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's but, in the card. But in the card. <laughs> of all the, I will say this: of all the supers in the entire game, Golden Gun takes the most skill. I know. No, there's the there's the dead eye perk, it, dude. You there's could, a dead eye perk that makes you more accurate, but you still have to hit your shot. Yeah, you can't you can't crit with the Golden Gun, but it's still, you still have to. Well, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that's true, especially when you get the Firefly perk on it. <laughs> Then it just goes kaboom and everything is happy. I would actually say that I feel like, I mean, I haven't played the other classes enough, but I would almost say if we're going to talk about which one out of the hunters is more difficult, I would say Night Stalker. Just because the, doors are, to actually doors get are the, the most bang. out of it, oh. I think it's more difficult. You have to time things better. You Even just the grenade use and everything, like what's actually available within the class, I feel like is more tactical than the other classes have been that and but, anything with void class requires this annoying accuracy that means that you can perceive except no where except no nova bombs do it too <laughs> <laughs> you have to understand where the door is going to be when you start hovering six inches above where you're standing right now that's true but but as long as you Night shoot Stalkers, anywhere within that hallway that's very true <laughs> But the great thing about Night Stalker is as long as you elevate before you shoot and you shoot yes. at the ground, That's true, yeah. you will still get some effect from it. Whereas with Golden Gun, no matter what you do, you miss. You just missed. That's true. And, and I, swear uh, they, I swear they shadow nerfed the accuracy of it with Taken King. Yeah, they did. I would okay. agree with that. Cause it, that's, because I, I, used to be to, to, I used to have pretty good aim assist. Right. Like, I used to have to watch as badly, and now it's like, I'll be like, I swear I shot that person's well, you, face I off. Used to be able to, I used to be able to nail somebody from across the map, and now it's like, uh, nope, not going to happen. And I'm fine yeah, with that. Like, maybe it needed it. I don't know. But <clears throat> I wish <clears throat> it was you. Will, Willie's throwing salt <laughs> over here. I know. I'm just ignoring him. I talk right <laughs> over so him. She, she's already fitting in. <laughs> Yeah, she she knows the deal with the deal. That's good. All right, so wishy hunters. <laughs> oh, it's so true, so true. One v one me, bro. When we finally get custom games. Oh, hashtag Bungie uh. needs to set up private matchmaking just for us, so I can prove that I'm not squishy. Just so you- oh, wow. <laughs> All right, so the gunslingers. Um, there's also there's an large argument. And we'll we'll probably kind of touch on this little bit but there's also a large argument going back and forth about which class happened first um you know we know pretty confidently about the titans that defenders were the first class and then that led or well sunbreakers are actually with the tank i was about the sunbreakers are actually the first class the defenders are the second class but they were the first class that we experienced in the game until taken king we don't know for sure but with the cards you know the card for the sunbreakers is um some, I believe it's the one that says that some Titan orders predate even the right. city, and and, and that's to the Sunbreakers. Yeah, it, it. Well, like I said, I think it's a Sunbreakers card, yeah. which oh, does make it, yeah. it. It makes it um, seem like possibly they're one of the oldest, but that doesn't mean that they are the oldest. You know, right? And uh, I mean, and so, and that's the kind of argument is the. Uh, I kind of, I personally think that the Night Stalker was would be the first class for hunters, just because of the na- nature of their class. And we'll get to them in just a second. But I wanted to run through the well, Blade Dancer real fast. If, oh, go for it. I was just gonna say with, with the it being, I would agree that it's probably the oldest because when Taken King went to drop and they talked about the new subclasses we were getting, they're the only ones they referred to as ancient. Um, whether they came from like ancient guardians and it was passed on it was a, a power that we haven't had in a long time and that's why we're just now getting it um so it's supposed to be kind of new to current guardians um 
So I would definitely agree that probably all of the Taken King ones were probably supposed to be the some originals. of the originals. Yeah. And I, I mean, and that ties into the you know the overtly elemental nature of all three of the new subclasses. You know, mm-hmm. obviously the the Orlocks is extremely primal, and then. The sun. I mean, all of them. All of them are very, very much more primordial than the other. The other ones seem much more refined. I guess not refined in the sense that, yeah. Anyways. Well, I mean, Defender Titans. You know, they just outright. They're. That's exactly the perfect name for them. Defenders. Your super is a freaking bubble. That's not going to help in any way, shape, or form offensively. But. Um, no, it's weapons of light. Come on. They yeah, there's more, weapons of light, but the new we'll, ones we'll, seem more natural based. Like right. they're based on nature somehow more. Even even the bow somehow. I don't know quite how. <laughs> Void is probably the most obscure it's one. It's a to more me. it's a more natural weapon. It doesn't right, the weapon yeah, itself yeah, is. Yeah. And then when you, even though the hammer may not necessarily be, it's it's more. You when you use that one, it feels more like fire based to me than any of the other solar ones do. And then um, you've got. I mean, you're fucking shooting lightning out of your hands as a warlock so like that's, pretty- that's just a straight <laughs> sith lord man i mean <laughs> well, yeah. you go straight emperor palpatine Unlimited on power. everybody <laughs> but but warlocks aren't op but we'll we'll, we'll get back on that on another time. <laughs> oh. so let's talk about the blade dancer just a little bit so i have i have the blade dancer uh willie or justin or bell do you want to pull up the arc blade card while i'm reading this one sure yeah sure right. So, Blade Dancer, beautiful lethality, relentless style. There's something to be said for the blade. A knife won't jam. A knife won't run dry. A knife is very, very quiet. Leave the noise and fire to others. There's work to be done out there in the dark. Monsters that deserve death delivered quickly, silently, and without mercy. And the way that you do that is with the arc blade. So the, the Blade Dancer is the Arc class, obviously, as most people already have known about that. And they use, their super is the, called the Arc Blade, and I don't know which one of... I got those. it. Okay. Uh, arc Blade. Set aside your weapons and lose yourself in the Blade Trance. Arc Light galvanizes your armor and ha- hastens your movements. And when your knife finds a target, it discharges a snap of annihilating current. For as long as the trance lasts... You are the very shadow of death, a.k.a. OP. That's also in the card. I love being called the shadow of death. (laughs) Come on. I mean, you're you're the shadow of death. You're OP, damn it. Um, But I'm going to admit, when I do run my hunter in PvP, I usually run Arcblade because uh, it's, it's pretty fun to do. Haven't done it since taking King Drop. I heard they did nerf it, but... um, Meh. It, it does seem like you're in a trance, kind of. You know, it goes into third person, and I mean, just it went, especially when you got like four or five people together. It's just so great, it's so awesome. <laughs> I love um, it. And before then, before taking King, that was even I, I considered it the more supportive class in the Golden Gun because you know it had the the stealthy perks. You know, go and viz. And Viz lasts longer. Do this to also go and Viz, or you can do this to go and Viz. Um, like three different ways to be, or at least two different ways to be invisible. And uh, now that I think about it, I can't even think about anyone other than Ariana Three, whose subclass is really confirmed, other than maybe Cade being a gunslinger, out of the famous hunters. That we know of. Well, and Shin Malfer, but we'll get there Shin. later. <laughs> yeah, we have we'll get there lot. later. We have a lot of notable <laughs> hunters to run through. Yeah, I mean, they're the hunters, you got to give them credit. You know, like I said, they're the, the explorers, the first one to get out there and see what's going on. Um, so definitely props to hunters and those that run them because I'm just not that big of a fan. Oh, well, thank but, you, buddy. <laughs> it's nasty. your it's your cup of tea. Then go ahead and sip it. And uh, Justin, any, any words on yeah. that? Yeah, yeah. Actually, uh, blade dancer. A lot of people think that it's just like a button masher, but it you have to get up and close 
and just personal to use it. And it's even more evident by mashing now. the button. Yeah, but <laughs> by mashing, but but <laughs> the jump is terrible. No, yes, no, blink the jump is, is good. Terrible. No, no, no. Don't just get to know this. Just get used to blink. If you want, if you're if you're a you know like an explorer and you want to get to the top of things, yeah, blink's probably not for you. But if you like to traverse a map really quick, um, yeah, uh, blink is pretty awesome. All all the hunter jumps are awesome, and they're actual jumps, by the way. They're not floaty floofs. Um, <laughs> floaty floofs. I'm going to call it that from floofers, now on. Floofers got a floof. Floof has got a floof. Floof has got a floof. Which is going to kill us. I I found a couple of pretty cool texts from some of the Blade Dancer Crucible quest lines uh, that kind of show the disdain that Shax and some of the other Titans have for Blade Dancers. And they all kind of hint at how there's like (laughs) zero honor in being a Blade Dancer. Um, Which makes me think that Cade is a Blade Dancer, by the way. No, I I honestly... Yeah, because he's a liar. Golden Gun guy. No, but you know, Honestly. because Kate Kate is known to be an extreme opportunist. Like he's, oh, well, he's I mean, like, I'll just wait until you screw up and then I'll stab you in the back. Well, he doesn't yeah. even wait for that when you go through this storyline, you know. He's like the whole time you're doing the actual Taken King storyline, you know, is that uh Zavala and Icor, they're talking. You know, they're like, <laughs> What the hell are you doing? And he's like, all right, all right, yeah, yeah, I'll get to you in a minute, but Guardian, do that. And then he, you know, goes out. And then it's all about Cade because he Hey, just, Cora, he, you want to see what, he, a, what a landing zone on the Dreadnought looks like? <laughs> no, he, hey, said that to, he said that to Zavala, and Zavala was pissed. <laughs> you, could hear, you could hear his... his <laughs> as, as pissed as he'll ever get, because he has no emotions, but... Uh, Oh, he has emotions. No. Oh. He has back. no emotions, my ass, dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> scary. <laughs> but no, the backstabber card, or it's mm-hmm. it's the little quest. It uh, it's it's awesome. It's a Cade quote, and it says, "If the blade dancer seem, if the blade dance seems a little unfair, it's because it is." Oh no, I'm sorry. If blade dancers seem a little unfair, it's because they are. There's no room for honor in a fight. Cade six. That's it. <laughs> That's the slogan right there, which is why, I'm just saying. which is why I view Cade as Malcolm Reynolds. I also see Cade as being the type of person I'd walk up to you and say, "You know, next time you stab me in the back, have the have the balls to do it when you're facing me." How can how's that possible, Blue? You have not seen. You know, you're kicked off. You're out of this team. <laughs> You need to when you go watch Firefly, you can get back on. You gave them all and hug. Here's, you could stab them in the back. Dad's you sitting here calling Zavala salty. Just I didn't call him salty. I, said, I called him emotionless. <laughs> here's one right here, carving the path, uh, which is another uh, bounty. It looks no, it's a quest point, but it says blade dancers lack the striker's strength. But even a striker must admit the blade dancers move at a velocity that the strikers can only hope to match. And that's a uh, direct quote from Commander Zavala, a.k.a. the first character to have a heart attack eventually in Destiny. <laughs> yeah. He's already bald. What else does he have? He's I got mean, little, uh, glowing, little glowing aneurysms in his forehead. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. The dude doesn't have much time left. <laughs> Between Cade and Icor and the hidden. <laughs> between us and Cade, we're going to be the death of him. Hey, Cade doesn't have, have a lot of time left of... either. That's true. He's oh. got a year. Unless he, he makes it, unless he fails another bet. Oh, he's totally going to. I want them to actually include <laughs> that in the game. Like, I want them to be like, he's like, ah, oh, am I allowed to say damn it? Ah, yes. oh, damn it. <laughs> if you've got to ask, I the want answer's another yes. And, and now I'm... <laughs> Like I just I want that to be like a year from now, like literally a year from the beginning, or what, like from when he says that I want them. Like he's still there, and you're like, wait, dude, you're supposed to be gone. He's like, don't talk yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. I think that uh, Nathan Fillion loves the role. You can just oh, yeah. tell from the way he does the voice that he loves being Cade, just like he loves being Buck. Yeah, I was about to say it's so, just like Buck. He, it's a role you know. He- Dude, he nailed Buck. So, like, he was one of the best voice actors in De- uh, Halo Five. Like, mm. um, yeah, no, I'll Buck was saying. easily the like most likable character, I believe, even more than Chief in Halo Five. There, I said it. Bring on the hate, mates. No, um, no, Nathan Fillion will. Yeah, no hate. He's no an hate. awesome actor. 
So That's nice. why I don't and think he'd ever leave. They'd never drop Cade. He's too. After taking King, he got way too popular. Even if, well, even if him. even if Cade's not the vanguard, he'll still be involved. Well, actually, I, mean, I, I almost hope he you, isn't because you then pissed then off Pins, really. He might oh, become like, a viable character <laughs> to come do something with us. You know, like how cool would it be if he's actually somebody that's more out and about rather than stuck in the tower all the time? I think that would open up his character a lot more. Yeah, how else are we going to find out about all the other hidden stuff that he has? All right. Talking so, about hidden stuff. Uh oh. Let's talk about Night Stalkers. Oh, I thought I'm you were going to so talk bad. about it. No, we're not. We're not. We're not opening that can of worms yet. <laughs> I'm going to go. I'm going to go as long as I can without incurring the wrath of everybody in the world. Oh, it's going to happen, Blue. I know. That's why. But I, I can defer. So, so Bell, you want to talk about <laughs> Night Stalkers? Yes, I will. I will talk about Night Stalkers. Okay, so the Holy night crap, started. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I'm not talking about Night <laughs> No, I'm, we're not talking about that yet. This is another thing about Blade Dancers. Fully upgrade the Blade Dancer subclasses, complete the path. Mm-hmm. And this is, I don't know who Tevis is, Te- but they nope. say, in, First and, and I quote, don't believe Cade. Half the things out of his mouth are lies. Yeah, the other half are fibs. fibs. <laughs> <laughs> I love Tevis. My favorite line of his... Oh, easy. He likes to say he stole the secret of stealth tech from Rasputin, and that's how Blade Dancers learned the trick. Ha. Direct. I don't know who this Tevis is, but I'm going to look it up a little bit more. Because, no, no uh, you, won't have the, to look it, you won't have to look it up, because guess what we're talking about? We're going to be talking about okay. the Night Stalkers. He's a Night All Stalker. All right, take it away, Bl- take it away Bill. <laughs> okay, so the Night Stalker card reads, A lone hunter stalks the night, firing arrows into the darkness. There is no hiding, no escape. In the distance, the beast falters, tethered to the void. The killing blow comes without hesitation, without mercy. There's truth in the edge of light, and beneath that truth, a deeper truth, hidden from all but a few. That truth is this. Monsters need not fear the night. Do not hunt the monster. Become the monster. <laughs> and on top of that, the Night Stalker's Trail, which is where we become the Night Stalker, which that was the other great thing about Taken King, is we actually get subclass quest so you actually you actually get a connection with your subclass so the night stalker's trail says and it's a quote from cade six it says picking it up is the easiest easy part hunter putting it down again well you'll find that's addictive that power this weapon is something special your light gets twisted changed you find the power to punch through and borrow something from the other side the void opens up a hole and draws from the deep go ahead carry it a while hunter you'll feel how heavy it can get and so so tevis is actually you know just to kind of go off what willie was saying tevis is actually the hunter who was a night stalker that we got our night stalker dusk bow from he was overrun and killed and we actually we actually were sent originally because cade he owed cade money and we had to, we were basically the repo people. He got in trouble. That is not why, though. We all know Cade <laughs> liked him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Come Cade. On. Well, same as uh, Brask. I mean, that's the same exact story as him. Yeah. The, he, the he tries previous, to say he doesn't vendor. care about people, but you. I mean, can that's tell the Cade. entire. Well, he directly says it when when you're playing that quest too. He even says how he, like he likes him, but he owes money, so he can't really like him, but. Yeah. <laughs> but he also can't die because he owes you. He owes him money. Right. <laughs> but, I mean, the main that's, reason, that's the entire as reason. As far as the his text went, quest. is that he can't. He, he can't die. Right, and I mean that's that's the entire reason Cade sends us against Tanix is because Tanix is the one who murdered Brass. Cade, Cade has a vendetta against Tanix. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was it, that was just simply a a uh, revenge killing. But there was nothing. Like, well, there was a bunch of stuff in story that conveniently was there, but he was using us as a a means to getting back at the person that killed his friend. But so, and so the night stalker super is called the dusk bow and I don't have the card pulled up right now, but oh. <laughs> conveniently Willie doesn't either. So, <laughs> Oh no, I do not. Cause Victory. I was looking at other stuff. I didn't think you were going to go there or yeah. I thought, uh, Justin well, might be think, on top of it. You never think that the teacher is going to call on you, Willie. Until it does. And then For Dustpo, I have a ranger found. 
Yeah. Um, which is a, a log entry from Tevis, which says, "Hold the line against the vex of the Black Guard, and you save the Night Stalker Tevis." You know, this, this is actually the the uh, subclass mission quote, and it says, "I've asked, a, I've had a dozen hunters ask me why it's so hard to summon a dusk bow. I asked them what they thought of the void, and their eyes told me everything. You can't be afraid. That's the secret. No fear." That's Tevis's log entry uh, nineteen thirty three eight. And so th- I also kind of feel that that's from a handbook. We don't know the name of that handbook, but that's obviously a handbook that Tevis had on him because that's that was the thing. His handbooks are hidden, hand down from sen- senior hunters to novice hunters, and that's how they get you know that's how they learn about their their abilities. And actually, the reason why it's it's a grimoire card is called Shadow Shot, even though the weapon is actually a dusk bow. It says, Shadow Shot, summon the power of the void to draw back and launch a precision long-range projectile that reaches out and snares enemies with slowing, draining tethers of void light. Shadow Shot lets a hunter's dead-eye precision carve a path to new battles. Pins and I were talking about this the other night, and we have decided that everyone likes calling us Robin Hoods. I like calling us the deadly cupids of the Purple Lantern Corps. Because <laughs> that is totally. Leave an abbreviation for that, please. <laughs> the D C P L C. I don't there even know what that would spell. Shouldn't there have been DC- a K in there somewhere? Lantern or an N? No. Or is with a C, Willie. Oh my gosh. Anyway, oh, the, re- the, the, the long, long story short is everyone calls them Ra- Robin Hoods, and it's like, well, you know, except they create the bow out of their will, which is what the Lantern Corps do. And then I, of course, felt like an idiot because I didn't, re- I couldn't remember what the Purple Lantern Corps was. Yeah, it's love. So that that obviously went to Cupid. So it's all love, baby. Yeah. So, oh God, not this, not no, we're not going down that road. By the way, it would it would be pronounced Dick Plick. So we may want to avoid that. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. No. You really ought to bet no. these censor, things, Blue. Censor, no. censor. No. no. I blame, I blame, hey, hey, I blame hey, Blue. Hey, hey. I am not saying anything wrong. I am literally pronouncing exactly what DCPLC would be. That's all. I, I blame Blue. I blame Blue. <laughs> it is all Blue's fault. <laughs> it's We're going to go with that. You told me if I have to question it, say it, and I question it, so I said it. There you go. No, no. She's right. She read the manual. The um, no, uh, I wanted to look at the Erupting Void card, or it's not really a card, it's a crucible. I was looking um, at that too, go for it. Quest buddy. step, uh, the Night Stalkers found a way to turn their void light into flame without a single iota of, soda, of solar energy evolved. Soda. If he cared about the intricacies of light manipulation, Shax would say that it's quite a thing. Ikore, talking's hard, and, uh, there's a few people who point at this card and say that this is proof that Night Stalker came after Golden Gun because solar um, energy is mentioned. I don't think no, that's necessarily okay, true. Well, okay. but- Here's my defense of why that doesn't make any sense to me. We know – so light – light is – okay, I'm going to try uh, – grip. light is coexisting in three different forms. There is void light – solar light and arc light each of those various forms has different metaphysical properties based on that particular element the so to say that to say that that defends the golden gun existing before the the void that doesn't make any sense because they all the powers all existed at the same time it's not like oh we discovered it's not like we discovered seven new periodic elements which we did by the way but um which made my ocd very happy but the um, <clears throat> the uh, the 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 light elements, and the reason why I just was talking to somebody because there was a giant argument about the difference of lights, and they kept saying, "Oh, well, it's just light." It's like it's not. There actually are nuanced differences between the three, and but they all existed at the same time. It's not like you you we were given solar light, and then we were given void light. It was we were given light and we manifest that differently. So I don't, I, mm, I think it's more interesting. <laughs> I think it's more interesting that the warlock is impressed because we just told her that something's too complex for her them to understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like to think of the light as a as a spectrum, right? Like we we've spoken about it before, like the electromagnetic spectrum. You know, there's 
there's different bands, and I think that's what the different elements are. They're arc, void, uh, solar. Um, they're just different frequencies within the light of the traveler. Go for it, Bill. I was just going to say, for me, like I would say it, it's kind of along the same lines, but for me, void would come first for everybody just because if we're talking about how, like, especially when reading that those cards there in particular, it really feels... It, it makes you realize that the word void isn't just a word in this case. Like with the other subclasses, for some reason, I feel like it was just kind of like, oh, void, whatever, we'll accept that term. Whereas when you read these, it makes it sound dark. It makes it sound like it's potentially on the edge of good and bad, right? And it's like it's like stepping just over that line, grabbing a bow out of the darkness and deciding to try to use it for good. And so to me, it's kind of like, I, I imagine void as in like the starting point, right? Nothing, right? And then you have light and then electricity. I don't know. But like. <laughs> right. Well, and so here I'll, I'll, I'll kind of, I'll do what I did with this argument. So there actually are, <clears throat> there actually are Grimoire cards for the elements. Jaren, we're going to take a little bit of a deviation on this one because this is something that uh, I've, no, no, it'll take me like three minutes and you can just shut your face. Do it, Blue. Um, <laughs> so, and the reason, the reason why is because I don't, I don't think people actually realize the there is actually a distinction with there there is a a distinction a strong distinction between the elements and it's actually recorded in the grimoire and so real quick void is there's a quote that says it's fitting then that we have weaponized the unknown thank you kashin kashin's going to time me in the chat um <laughs> the card says the universe is defined you, by kashin. fundamental forces beneath the world of light and matter lies the vacuum and the vast dark secrets that it contains in the understanding of this vacuum lies the secret of void light. Now, what's important here, for me at least, is we have to understand that within, within the grimoire, there are, there are multiple uses of the same terms. So exactly what Bell was just saying. Void, when you talk about a void, like a, a, the void of space, that is not the same as void light. It's the same thing as saying... A dark room, that doesn't mean that the room is filled with hive or with, you know, the darkness. It's just a dark room. It, there, there's different uses of the terms. Mm -hmm. And so when they say vast dark secrets, I think I read that as pointing towards unknown. Not not evil, just unknown. Does that jive yeah, no, that, with everybody? That, Does that make That makes sense at the same time. And like just I there at least is some kind of not as the evil, but the unknown is at least it's so unknown at this point that they're unsure right. of well, what it acts like, what type it may be. Just because, like, when you sit there and talk about, like, you'll feel how heavy it is. There, That definitely gives a feel. Like, the whole card reads very... Mysteriously? Not, mysterious, but in a, in a way that leans towards... It might not be something that the average person can handle right. because maybe you're not meant to. Well, and it's a very human trait to be to be scared of something we don't understand. And that's right. that's the other thing that like is really big in the game is everything even though we have these super powerful characters ultimately there is a human kernel to every single one of them. There there are things that are very human about every single character. You know, the the entire debate between Osiris and the speaker is a very human situation. Um go for it. No, I was going to say we almost got through one. I thought you mentioning Osiris. I I was you know that <laughs> yeah you, you know it you was did not it blue. Happen. I did it on purpose. Um, okay, so solar <laughs> solar starts with a quote that says sometimes the only answer is to burn it all away. It says the universe is defined by fundamental forces. Energy is carried by quanta, tiny messengers of change. In the understanding of these messengers lies the secret of solar light. So here, the I mean, it's it's a new, like I said, very nuanced difference. Um, it's still mysterious. It's because you're you have to you have to come to understand it, but you you have an understanding. You have a picture of what you're trying to understand. So solar is all about understanding the messages of the quanta. You know, the energy, the transformation of energy. It's it's fire. Fire is literally a chemical reaction of something burning, and that's what solar is. That's why. It's a fi I mean, that's a giant fire image on there. Hey, blue, is it fire? It's fire. I think it might be. It may be <laughs> it's fire. It's fire. 
<laughs> no. You know what, this guys? Is actually it good. might be fire. It just might be. This is actually no. good that Blue let us down this because I've been I've been knocking this thing around for a while. Right. That uh, Void is the one monkey wrench in the whole thing, but it's not. Um, the solar no no in mine oh, not yours oh. blue okay. Um, okay fair enough <laughs> no but uh, solar and arc abilities actually exist in our world today just on a very much smaller scale uh, than we're talking about with our guardians um, a solar ability is nothing more than well as we see it in game to me at least it's nothing more than an exothermic reaction right that's that could be produced i don't i'm not saying this is how our guardian produces it but in in real world it could be produced by um any number of chemicals reacting with one another and this happens every day in numerous processes in manufacturing and and actually in nature and then uh, uh an electrical reaction um of the same type or the same ilk actually happens in nature so these are things we can kind of quantify and, you know, kind of say, hey, these things are possible right now. Uh, void, I don't even know where to begin with. Well, so, but Void, void, void you could look at as the unknown. Right. Void you know? exists in nature as well. And that's it's, why I don't know where to the, begin with. Well, no, but I mean, and that's... But I it's mean, a, it's called the void. Right. It is it is the <laughs> unknown. So, and let me, let me read Ark real quick. Ark says, a spark can give life or take it. The universe is defined by fundamental forces. Complex matter is bound together by deep forces. And in the study of this binding lies the secret of arc light. So that's in, in that right there is for me, the crux arc is all about the understanding of what binds things together. It's the force. Okay. Which is why Palpatine owns it. And then solar is all about understanding the messages. That is the transfer of energy. So it's, it's the, the message is being transferred, not the binding. And then void is actually the unknown, what we don't know. It's like I said, very, 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 very slight difference, but there are differences. And I'm going to take it away and say Payan is a person. Payans are people too. <sighs> That's right. <laughs> Damn it. But okay, so I mean, I, that's that's a rabbit hole that's been chasing me for a while. It's the well, the the, yeah, ar but... the argument that I got into was someone was I can't even remember who it was, but someone was saying something about you know we should be able to change the color of our energies or of our supers, and it was like everyone was like getting all in a tizzy because solar has to be red, and it was like actually it doesn't. It I mean it it doesn't. It could be bright green for all I care. It but could was, be white. It could be I mean, white. I mean, yeah, it could be. It could be black. It could. I mean, have it, you ever looked matter. at fire? Well, yeah, yeah wouldn't blue almost be more? That's yeah. what I'm saying. It, is fire is more? I would totally colors. accept that change. <laughs> so, anyways, I've never back. seen a black fire, but I'd like to. Actually, actually, the think, hotter yeah. it gets, the think. hotter it gets, <laughs> the farther away it gets from that yellow color. Correct. In the, mm -hmm. But okay, so anyways, <laughs> thank you for noting that I derailed us on our show notes. I think we wrap that up. I right, wrap up. that rabbit hole. We're gonna just go ahead and pour some concrete over the top of that rabbit hole and not go back down it. All right, let's talk. Rabbit. There's no rabbits down there. We went all the way down to the bottom and made sure. Okay. So, back <laughs> to hunters. Gosh, man, this this one. I'm I'm sorry for everybody who's listening to this after the fact. It's a little bit sporadic. Longer is better. Go the longer blue. is better for cloaks. <laughs> it wasn't me God, this time. God, man, that is actually a really bad segue right there, wasn't that? Anyways, oh, so hunters, hunters are clo hunters have a class item that we we all know are cloaks, um, and the the um, the reason why is because if you think about it. What's like the one thing that anybody who actually goes and hunts in the wilderness is probably going to want to carry around with them? It's going to be camouflage and probably a blanket. Well, that's kind of where the cloaks came from. They, um, we, we have a little bit, we actually have quite a bit of information that's kind of scattered around on different, different class items. But we do find out from the cloaks that this is where we find out that 
hunters are really, as a class, they're kind of addicted to gambling. They love making dares with each other to try to one-up one another. And one of the reasons that they try to one-up one another is because the hunter who loses a dare, or as we call them, bets, they're called dares in the game, they actually they actually lose pieces of their cloak to the other hunter, which was a fun conversation in the chat because then we were all curious about why not all our cloaks are patchwork cloaks. We decided that... Um, all hunters are also master seamsters and we can just sew really, really well. But so the important thing is, and the reason why this is such a big deal is because hunters, their social hierarchy is kind of determined by the length of their cloak, which is why if you look at like the, the, uh, the raid cloaks, they're all the way to the ground. Whereas the cloak that you just get when you first start is, barely to the the mid of your back like it's a length. scarf it's a scar- yeah, yeah, it's scarf yeah it is a scarf actually i really want to go and start a new character to get my scarf back actually but so not only not only is it i mean the, the cloak is kind of a hunter's safety blanket like they they use it for everything and there's there's actually a cloak i think it's the dust walker cloak let's see if i can pull that up real quick thinking about it which actually points that out that they use it for everything. Um, and so that's why it's such a, that's why it's such an important piece of their equipment. And yeah, the, so the dust Walker cloak says a good survival Cape can be used as a hull patch bandage tourniquet, pressure seal and picnic blanket. So even, <laughs> I mean, that's the other thing you start finding out through most of these class items is Hunters have a tendency to to bet, and they also have an undying and uncompromising sense of humor about just about everything. They can be serious, but they usually try to spin it in a very humorous way. Um, The other the other part that I would like to also point out about the cloaks is, you know, even though most hunters are kind of like the Cades, they have that sense of humor. They they actually are pretty serious about most of the stuff that they do. They they take what they're what they're responsible for, which is the scouting and protecting of civilians on their way back to the city, very seriously, as is seen in like the Shinobi Vow items. And one of the ways that they do that is you can tell the story of a hunter by the cloak that he or she wears. What it what it actually reminds me a lot of. I don't know if anybody here's read Wheel of Time, but the uh, the storytellers in Wheel of Time have a very telling patchwork cloak. And to anybody, anybody else, it just looks like a, a, a pile of rags. Like they don't, they don't, no one knows what it means. No one understands it. But to other story, and I can't, I can't for the life of me remember off the top of my head what they are, what they're called, but they're storytellers. And to other storytellers, that cloak tells their story. They know exactly that patch was, you know, this such this this event or this person died. Um, it, it's a it's a it's a chapter book of their lives, and that's exactly what the cloak is to a hunter. Is it is the story of their existence? And I think I saw Bell steal a cloak item. I don't know. Are you pulling up grimoire cards over there, Bell? I'm I'm just reading through. I'm I'm on the destiny wiki and i'm just reading through like all the cloak descriptions literally if you just glance through all of them it, it, it's just they are each little one is just a, a it tells a mini story and and that's really cool um it's, it's not like a lot of the other ones where it's just, it's just quotes there's actually very few that are quotes compared mm-hmm. to other items in the game it literally is just like i'm looking at the rust worm yeah rust worn cloak and it's like it's been stained and torn by old metal but whatever it went through it survived which that tells you about the person wearing it potentially as well not just the item itself and the number of them that are torn apart whether it was from bets or from whatever happened like the way they look really tells you a lot too and like when and another one is the cloak of techmore and it says when an old hunter wears a simple cloak ask yourself where she got it and what the cloth remembers and so that, that tell, I mean, that's, that's kind of a nod to, you know, a lot of hunters think that these, they're, they're wearing these cloaks to be flashy. And a lot of hunters do wear very flashy cloaks, but that means when you see an old, an older hunter 
and they're wearing a very plain cloak, there's a reason. And it's it's not usually a really fun reason, but there's they're they're remembering somebody via that that item. And like the Nagari cloak kind of confirms this. It says, In this age of light and fire, simple skills still endure. Hunters embroider signs of war and loss on their cloaks. So I mean I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of like when you start digging into like you know I'm a big dead orbit person. It's when you start digging into the dead orbit lore. It's like all of a sudden it's like yeah you guys are actually I mean there, there's a reason why you guys seem depressed is because there's a lot of stuff that you kind of take on your shoulders and that's kind of the the thing with the hunters. The hunters like joking, they like laughing, but I I kind of want to almost point out that sometimes the person who's laughing the loudest is the person who has the most on their shoulders. Or they, at least it feels like they have a lot on their shoulders. So, that, that's my... I think, well, then you I, have the other cloak. Oh, Go no. ahead, Justin, because no, I'm not a can of worms. Yeah, no, I think I may have found... If Willie's going to be a hunter, I think I found his cloak. Oh, please tell it, me it's the... It's Go the Frumius. It. It's the yes. Frumius cloak. Tell the warlocks your cloak is frabjous. <laughs> they respect words they don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to point um, out when you were talking about the one you I started need to off. Find, is that legendary or is that rare? <laughs> it's I rare. That cloak. It's a rare. That's a I, I don't even care. I need that cloak in my life. <laughs> what was that? About? I hope you can get that in the TTK. I just say that the scarf. The, it's actually called a scarf that you start off with. Um, the description on that one's actually really cool because even though it is just kind of this little piece of cloth and it, you would think it doesn't have a lot of story behind it, it, it already does because the, the hunter's cloak speaks to their personality. Your ghost scrounged up this tough synthetic wrap marked with an ancient double-headed eagle. So it's literally that your your ghost found that one for you to actually officially like make you lay, like look like a hunter. So it was like kind of like a gift from your ghost. So it may look kind of lame and tiny, but it, it's actually really meaningful because it, it that is that starts your story. Like it's it's new ish, <laughs> it's tough because you just came back, and it literally tells the beginning of your story. Right, right. And I can I and think you, actually the ghost actually manufactured it. Like the ghost ma- materialized it, so it actually is a brand new scarf. I think. And then I of remember. course you have the uh, the cloaks like the cloak of dredge and roar. Mm-hmm. Where that's not exactly unless I don't know who made this cloak, but it does say before he took Pahanin's light, Dresdenor ruled the crucible, the notorious thorn at his side, which anybody who played Vanilla Destiny knows the thorn what it does. Um, it's an awesome you can gun see it. that everyone should have. It's a uh, blast by the <laughs> class. Oh, well, man. and I kind of, I kind of took that as this is actually the cloak of that individual. Who right. do you think made it, though? Do you think Dredgen actually made that cloak himself? I, I would say so. I mean, the thing is, is a lot. It sounds like a lot of hunters make their own cloaks. I mean, you look at it; it has the the vanguard the, symbol on the back. You know, um, which it does have a weave that kind of looks like web when you look at it closely. Mm-hmm. But it still has the vanguard symbol on its back, which we all know Dredgen was a. Is that uh, the vanguard well, or is that the hunter sigil? Yeah, it's the hunter. Oh, it's the it's hunter. hunter sigil. But you know, who, right, 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 right. I had to draw sigils. that. I had to make that by scratch. Yeah. So Justin knows I know that it. by memory. I know it. Um, I, I mean, like it's the, almost like it's almost like a a something that someone that everyone looks up to would wear, right? Yeah, no, I definitely. I think it is. I'm gonna get in trouble. No, hey. Uh, also, we didn't mention the handbook, did we? Not yet. We're gonna talk about handbooks next. Okay, cool. Well, the the grinder's cloak alludes yeah. to it. Yeah, so it's, it's Bell loves it, the grinder's cloak. No, I hate that thing. I don't, I don't, no, 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 no. I don't care what the lore is behind it. I will burn every single one I receive. No, that no. freaking rust burner. Rust burner. Can, rust I don't burners. Know, can you need that crap. Are, Awful. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. No rust burners. Well, for why me. you that do this to it. me? <laughs> that was it for me. Rust burners. If I get another rust burner, I swear to God. No. Uh, the grinder's cloak says first check your cloak for damage. Second, inspect yourself for major wounds. <laughs> so that just kind of shows you the importance they put on their cloak. Well, it's because the cloaks. person's busy grinding. Yeah. 
Buy that they're, cloak, they're though. Fun. Let that cloak get damaged. <laughs> I don't care. Grind that cloak. And then Bell, Bell points out one of my favorite cloaks is the strength of the pack, just because it's an awesome cloak. Um, is the It's a pattern that Anna Bray wore during the Battle of Twilight Gap. And <clears throat> Anna Bray was actually a notable hunter. I can't remember. I don't have her card pulled up right now. But um, she her her big thing was the Twilight's Twilight Gaps, and then Belle found a really really detailed one called the Wetwork Cloak. You want to read that one? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. the one that says that it was this passage intentionally redacted. I love it. I love that. I want to know why. I really really it's really want to know why. It's wet work. You that never just makes me think of yeah. Milo. No, no wet work you is say that her name was Anna Bray. Yeah. Anna Bray. Oh, you're- I yeah, don't know. Did I mispronounce that one too? You guys, you guys, I'm, I'm going to have to put disclaimers at the start of all these things. Um, just for the record, when I start talking about pancake, that is, I'm going to let one of these. I mean, that one, that's pancake. Uh, that's you pancake. Say that guy. Quit saying it like you're a tourist, Pahanim. <laughs> Let's talk what about handbooks. What it is then? Uh, what are we way? talking about, Blue? Let's talk about handbooks. Real quick, we got three handbooks that we know about. They are so. Remember, hand handbooks are the training tools for new guardian hunters. We know of three, and the third one is kind of the one that I still i I'm convinced it's a book. Some sites have it listed as this individual's name, and I don't think that's correct. But that's, I'm gonna let it go. That's, so the first book is the handbook of parentheses un in parentheses controversial advice and then the second book is aphorisms to anger warlocks which i actually really want to get a copy of huh. and then the justin you can name that one i'm just not going to embarrass myself no no you're, you're good the, the pancake errata the pahanin <laughs> the pahanin errata there are so many things I could go with on. I know, that. I know. So that's I'm it. just gonna. Good job, Bell. Refrain. Take the high <laughs> so road. To quote Take Cade, the high road. To quote Cade, there's a joke in there somewhere. There's a joke in there somewhere. Um, so the handbook. So it, most of these actually only have very, actually really, of quotes. I think each one of them has maybe two. Um, the. To anger warlocks, one actually is on warlocks items. It's not on any hunter items. I think I think it's Nemesis Plane is the one that it's on. Um, just just because I didn't know what a, an aphorism is. Oh yeah, go. For uh, it. I had to I had to look it up. It was a uh, a terse saying uh, expressing a general truth. So in this case, it's it's kind of a blunt. A truthful statement that's going to piss off a warlock. Correct. So, for example, Nemesis Plane, which is a set of armor, I guess, for the warlocks, it says, we learned how to blink from warlocks, but please don't admit that. And then the other one that we have from that one is from Blind Evoke, which is a warlock class item. And the quote is, learning without application is like drinking without thirst. <clears throat> <clears throat> Warlocks. <laughs> Can we get back into Anna Bray being a uh, hunter? Where did where did that come up at? That was the. Uh, it was the strength. I'm of the actually pack. seeing it now. It's during the Battle of Twilight Gap. Yeah, it was Pilot, Twilight Gap. Uh, a pattern worn by Anna Bray during the fateful Battle of Twilight Gap. Right, and now just, it, it kills me because apparently she's an ascendant of uh, Clovis Bray. Oh, is she a descendant, or is she a guardian? She's part of the was, Bray family. Yes, she is part of the Bray family, but she might not be a descendant of that generation because remember, guardians were revived from that. From any dead person is viable to be a guardian. There are actually, I think, three people that we know. We know a Willa, an Anna, and a Lise. And then you Anna, mean Elsie? Whatever. And then. Of course, Clovis and Clovis the second. Oh my gosh! As I say, there's always Clovis as well. I think, Clovis uh, and also is, Clovis the second. And there's another one as well. Um, looking for no. a name right back. 
Yeah, known there, family there, members: there's... Clovis, Clovis the second, Willa, Anna, and Elsie. <laughs> okay, you you need to get uh, Willa in there. Okay. Yeah, I got my stuff going on. Willa, That's yeah, I she was a doctor, by the way. <laughs> um, it says here in the in good temper quest, the unique datatistic structure of relic crystals inspired by Doctor Willa Bray to develop the first engram matter encryption techniques during the Golden Age. So, uh, Dr. Bray there, Dr. Willow Bray specifically, was the first one to develop the way to... So, she's kind of like the first Crypt Arc? Oh, she might. Like? Elsie, Elsie was the um, designer of the Eon Trespass ship. Yeah, I saw that. She's you know, a fan. A she's a, a friend of Justin's. Who she will explain the travel time that is required between planets. Yeah, oh, made it three years before <laughs> she disappeared. Um, guys, guys, uh, I I do have a confirmed uh, subclass on a hunter, other than Cater. Um, Anna Bray was a gunslinger. Um, oh yeah. Talk to Lakshmi. Step two will tell you. Uh, you want another story about the Twilight Gap? Anna Bray, the hunter, we all dug deep that day. We all touched the light in ways that we never thought we could or should. Anna, though, when she okay. fired the gun where her golden blast hit home, she left behind the pools of light like splashes of sunlight that burned and burned. And that's Lord Shax speaking about Anna Bray. So she was a gunslinger and sounds like she might have been a little OP. <laughs> she, yeah, was, just she, was before, she was before she was she was vanilla gun center. So okay, so we're we're kind of throwing names around. So let's just run through a quick. So we already talked about Anna Bray. Um, Andal Brask was the vanguard hunter prior to Cade Six and was a close friend of Cade Six. Um, and we kind of mentioned him earlier. He was actually killed. By Tanix, which is where that whole strike um, kind of originates. He, there's there's actually a storyline reason, but Cade also has. I was about a, to say there's other stuff. There's going other on stuff in going there. on in there, but Cade kind of has a bone to pick with the guy. Um, he actually, I believe, if I remember correctly, he's he actually has a hunter or two who's been tracking Tanix, um, and they've been reporting back to him. So we have Andal Brass, Cade Six, which we all know and love from the Taken King. And then we have the next fun in alphabetical order, which I'm going to get screamed at about, is Dredged in Yore. <laughs> well, that's good. I think you got it. No, I, I'm not talking about the pronunciation. I'm talking about the giant freaking argument that we're still having about whether or not he's actually a hunter. FTW. Oh, no, he's goodness. definitely a hunter, but moving <laughs> on. Then we have, I'm always going to mispronounce this, even though it's awesome, Ephrodite, uh, which was a amazing hunter who was known for having a really, really strong sniper rifle. Every yes. time she pulled the trigger, an enemy of the city died. So she basically had final round on every single round. Um, yeah. I believe she's actually... I, I'm going off memory on this one, but I think she was actually an Iron Lord. Can't yes. Remember. She was an Iron Lord. Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Ephrodite. Oh. Do you want me Ephrodite? to rattle yeah, off the likely. Iron Lords real quick, Blue? Because I have uh, just, rat- just, just name off the... Yeah, the Hunters. Iron, yeah, the, the hunters. hunters. Yeah, do that for uh, us. Just the squishy yeah. ones. That's oh, it. Yeah. Good Lord. Yeah. Shut so up. Ef- <laughs> Ephrodite. We had Ephrodite. Get good, Willie. Get good. Yeah. Uh we had Ephrodite, Gellion, uh, Perun, and none of the other ones matter um, because they weren't <laughs> hunters, pretty much. I really like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got to go. Um, but yeah, Ephrodite is awesome. Her sniper is my fourth favorite legendary sniper, so moving on. <laughs> and just, just as a, just for my sanity and because I would feel remiss if I didn't point out the giant mythological connection between all these, the iron Lords in general, if you, if you just go to any, like just go to Wikipedia and start looking up Greek Norse mythology and type in their names and you're going to find 
pages of stuff on most of them. Um, it's just it's ridiculous how much these things actually kind of relate out to. I mean, I'm just I'm just looking right now, just because I was like I couldn't remember a couple of them, but it's just I mean it's rather striking how much information is out there. So I mean again, a lot of these names have deeper connotations and you know we we might get into that we have we have something floating around on the pole for lord saladin and the iron banner so if we ever get into that we will definitely talk to the iron lords and get into their naming we need to have titans on next week's too that will be that will be really spinful now that will be so much fun so after efforty we also have eris morn um eris morn is a former hunter she actually lost her ghost, which actually, for most of us, confirmed that we do not need a ghost to live, but we do need the ghost to revive. So she, uh, her next death will be her final one, which is another nod to another Grimoire card that we've talked about before. With another really big favorite fan of ours is Osiris. You know, we love talking about him so much. Well, also, if she was to take the Tolan path, Right. Um, right, right. He also doesn't have a ghost, but he's alive after dying. We'll get into that, I guess, during well, well, warlocks, yeah, warlocks or yeah. a Tol- maybe Tolan specifically. Well, we did kind of get into it with the Tolan episode. We're going to probably need to retouch it. I think the other thing that yeah, we we're going to need to we, retouch we, that yeah, one. We don't go through another episode where we talk about we need to go back and talk about other things. That's just kind of the other thing that happens every single episode is we realize that we are going to need to swing back by. <laughs> Um, Galeon, we already talked to he was an Iron Lord Jaren Ward uh, there's not a quote unquote confirmation that he is a hunter, he wears the last word he's a hunter what? There, what? Going, what are you talking about what? Do, do you not remember do you not remember like the two day discussion we had about this go for it go for it, have fun no I, Justin, I, do you have it pulled I up right now or no I think that he's go a hunter what do what do I need to pull up to say Jaron Ward's a hunter? We, we have confirmation. <laughs> what, I mean, what, what, first of all, on. it's pretty obvious that the fact that he brings up the last word. All right, let me see. Do I have Jaron? Yes, I do have Jaron. Hold on one second. Can I just say my favorite hunter quote while yes, he's looking for Jaron Ward? And I, this guy is a hunter. I don't know how to prove it, but he is. <laughs> um, uh, it's Omar Aga. Awesome. No, Omar. Individual. Omar is a hunter. We knew that. Uh, Tolan cracked the room, or led us to believe he did. I told him it was either that or the Hive have a hell of a recipe for beer. Uh, Slow clap. I love Omar. Slow clap, Omar. Omar. Omar totally did not get what was coming. No, Omar guy got probably the most brutal death out of anybody in the Crow to Fire team. Yeah. Um, and- because his light was literally stripped from him. Piece by piece by, uh, was it the Heart of Crota, I want to yeah. say? It, it was one of the witches. And she, she literally, yeah, it was either the light the thrall were feeding off of or it was. No, it was the thrall. And it was a, it was in revenge for what Ariana had done to the wizard that she had captured. Omar, but it was Omar's just, death I mean, was a direct was a direct copy of what the torture it, was. It was just so brutal, though, like the way they describe it. Um, all right, this is where I would say in the confirmation, it's the actually last word for ghost fragment. Um, where is it? I think Bell had it, one that she wanted to throw out real quick while you look for it. Yeah, go for it, Bell, because I'm looking okay, for a so specific. In the actual, like, just the basic last word card, it says the last word is a romantic weapon, a throwback to simpler times when steady aim and large rounds were enough to dispense justice in the wilds of a lawless frontier. Of course, some might say that time is coming on. That, to me, definitely sounds like the person who would be using this weapon would be a person who was out in the wilds of that lawless frontier. And we just talked about the beginning of this episode that the main people who were doing that at the beginning were hunters. Yeah. If absolutely. Mike if if Bell didn't love her mic so much, she would have dropped it. Yeah, just 
drop it. <laughs> Just I'll gently here. I'll pick it up and gently set it down. Okay. A, a, a <laughs> quote go. from Drops. the last word for uh, the ghost fragment for says Jaren and the others only a handful, but still our best hunters, what? our hardest hearts, oh, had oh, left three mm. sons prior. Tracking <laughs> fallen after the bandits had caused a stir. So, I mean, and, and not not to be a not to be the devil's advocate on that. Shut one. up. Okay. No, no, go for it. Ah, go for it's it. it's because so the the only reason I hesitate to use that is because you're talking about you're so Jaren is a guardian. We all know that and agree with that. The argument is not that he is a guardian. The argument is what class he is. The the problem is is that the others are not guardians. They are literally hunters. Like, not, not guardian hunters, they are just hunters. Mm. Is how I yeah. read that. Yeah, I mean, they don't capitalize hunter. And that's, that's at why... at the same time... You can... Mm. All right, all right, fine, let's look at the obvious things of Destiny. Okay, what is the gun that they show... That the golden gun appears into, no matter what you're holding? What, what type of gun is that in Destiny? What? Is that a hand? Oh, it's is a hand, that a hand cannon? cannon. It's a hand cannon. No, it's Justin, don't cannon? get excited. It's a hand cannon. We're not going there okay. yet. Okay. All right. So there you go. It's a hand cannon. I think I'm, so I think I broke it. hunters are known for hand cannons. Let's see. What other hunters used a hand cannon? Um, there's Dredge and Yor. Uh, there's also Cade Six because there's the the Ace of Spades mm-hmm. that you get here in T- Taken King. It seems like hand cannons, except with the exception of Pahanin with super good advice. Well, and we know, don't even know because that was his. That was obviously a heavy. I mean, we also. I mean, I assume he had other still, weapons. That's the only weapon that we have that was actually made by him. I got is you. the gotcha. uh, super good advice, or that he's mentioned on for that matter. I believe. Right. Um. But at the same time, it's his greatest thing because it has an AI that it has a talk personality. To you. Yeah, not in game, but apparently it has a personality. Uh, we'll get into that another time. And <gasps> I know another reason. What... <laughs> oh, 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 well. Go I'm sorry. for it, Bill. No, do it for I've, it. I've got one. It says the memory that sticks in my mind. This is this is the last word too. The memory that sticks in my mind is the iron on Jaren's hip. That is where hunters carry their guns. That warlocks ver- carry them on their butts. Well, actually, yes. both Great classes. As far as hand cannons. Both classes. So, warlocks and titans carry hand cannons on the small of their back. Hunters are the only ones that carry them on their hip. Okay, the so theory, therefore he would be a hunter if it was right. on his hip, and it was a hand cannon, which is what he would carry around if they were talking about the last word. Mike drop. Which is just like, Break a- like this. Guy, like- Hey, uh, don't, don't, hurt don't, hurt don't, hurt don't hurt the Yeti. Don't hurt the Yeti. Don't hurt the Yeti, though. Um, no, same card. I thought me and Bell were going to read the same sentence at the same time for a second. <laughs> That's the only part I got to, so. No, same card. I, I turned back to the man I would come to know as Jaron Ward, the finest hunter the system oh. may ever know and one of the greatest guardians ever to defend the Traveler's Light. It does. Hunter. It says it. It's capitalized. Okay. I, I ju- I'm just saying. Suck it, Blue. <laughs> <laughs> this is me giving you a high five. Yeah. High five. five. Yeah. High five. <laughs> so, yeah. it, and what I would like to say is, if if we have to argue whether or not Jaron Ward's a hunter, this is going to be a really long conversation. This is going to be an so, extremely long. I'm conversation. just saying. So let's just let's just go. Jaron Ward Hunter confirmed. Oh, there's no question. Yes. Okay. Good. Blue's good. wrong. Period. Oh Moving on. No, wrong. I'm not. <laughs> yeah, sure. Let's just let's for the sake for the sake of the argument, let's just say yes. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> Umaraga, we already talked about pancake. We already talked about. No, you did not talk about pancake enough. I'm sorry. You you left out like the major thing about oh, pancake. Oh yeah. All right. The you major thing about he, pancake he, is he, he's a coward who left Kabir to himself in the vault not of glass. That part, the actual cool part. He recognizes the the overpoweredness of Cthulhu. Yes, and he gave us two of the coolest hunter cloaks. He actually wants to blue. He wants I want to he make also, love to Cthulhu. Oh. Is what I got he, from that card. What's that? I said he wants to make love to Cthulhu. Is what I got from that card. No, he recognizes that Cthulhu is going to take over the world. 
because anytime anytime you what was oh god what was the quote you're just giving the squids a chance oh, he also god. he also has the the best advice when you enter a room look yes. up it may it may look weird but it's better than getting getting your head taken off <laughs> yes uh, yeah you'd rather not be weird Anyone who has played a first-person shooter knows when you enter a strange Which, room, you look up. I was about to say that is dun 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 super good advice. Right, uh-huh. he is full um, of it. He's and, full of super good advice. Maybe super good advice AI is a copy of him. I don't know if we got into it already, but he did make a book called the Pahanin Errata. Yeah, we didn't and it, read any of it. It is the collected sayings, quips, and observations by the legendary hunter Pahanin, who was also a coward. Um, <laughs> Come on, dude. Is this just what you want to do when Jesus I'm comes back? Just, just the quote. Just because what do you want? he ran away because the dude was guzzling plankton, you know, and going crazy. Yeah, it's the, uh, the quote is always look but up when you enter a room. he's also a, 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 a cephalophile. Yeah. That's what I think I put in the chat. No, he has cephalophobia. <laughs> No, wow. He's a cephalophile. No. Oh. There's a quote. There's yeah, a, no, a, a cloak called the Squid Pro Quo. Oh, Are you says, squidding yes. me? Are you squidding me? Yes, my love for cephalopods is well documented. That's well, directly from the Pahanin Arata. Also, I just want to bring bring to the conversation what an Arata is. Close. Oh, okay, uh, go for it. Did you just say Docaplex? Um, no, I said the, the <laughs> octopus cloak. It says, if human extinction seems imminent, try to relax. You're just giving the cephalopods a shot. That's also from the so, Pahani Narada. So this dude, is he has a, a very odd fetish for cephalopods, a.k.a. Right, yes. squids. Do you, do you want me to go down that connection there? With the cephalopod thing? Yeah, the cephalopod I, thing. Are you going to go into Cthulhu lore? If, what? As long as we have Are time to do last word. Are you going lore? No, I'm not doing Cthulhu lore. That would be terrifying. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> just go read. Oh, man, that's an amazing book, by the way. But anyways, oh, no, no, so don't do that. there is, there is a, another mention of cephalopods in the Grimoire, and it's from the Books of Sorrow. And this was a conversation. This was actually another conversation we had in the chat that was actually a very interesting conversation for me was the ammonites are actually cephalopods. Um, so it's very interesting to me that pancake has a love for cephalopods and he's also really known for the vault of glass expedition, which we know goes through the vex, um, there is a theory out there that the Vex are related in some form or fashion to the Ammonites because of the connection that is kind of established with here. And I'm doing a terrible job explaining it very quickly. But um, because he was so obsessed with cephalopods, it doesn't, we don't really know when the obsession began, but. Um, we because he's we knew about him in the vault of glass before we found out about his obsession with cephalopods they uh they kind of attributed that connection to the vex because also the um the time traveling capabilities and the vex actually have a connection to the ecumen which had a connection to the ammonites which were cephalopods and the gorgon's physical appearance has, I think, I the saying, argument. There's tentacles. There's the tentacles, I think, on the <laughs> gorgons. And they're described as swimming through time or through uh, the space. Well, so, all harpies. If you look at them, I mean, yeah, all the harpies are just. I don't look they like they have I shoot them. I, shoot I don't them know all. if I'd say they look like Pokemon. Harpy, yeah, I choose but... you. <laughs> no, but... Yes, what's the... And so, what? does that make Gorgon the, the evolved form? If you train your harpy long enough, it becomes yes. a Gorgon? Okay. Yeah, okay. you have to use a time stone, though. Yeah, I, I was about to say, you got to feed it a stone. 
time. So well, you two are so just really good. nerdy. Me and Bill are just like casual Pokemon fans. No, 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 no. Talk no. about well, time okay. stones. I, I used to not be, but we'll, cl- used, we'll play that. Act like you didn't know what we were talking about. <laughs> oh, okay. So are we can talk about Pokemon, or are we going to get into the best hunter story of all time. I think it's about that time, Blue. I think it is. Oh, can we talk? Okay, real quick, real quick. Hang on, hang on, real quick. Just a couple just, more hunters, couple more hunters. You we have, like, five, only have a half hour left. Three, yeah, three, three more, three more. I think we actually I only told have you two it was going to go four hours. Okay, Saimoto. Saimoto is another hunter that we actually do know her subclass. Um, Protofire she team. was a blade dancer, and she is actually one of the few blade dancers that we know actually used something other than an arc blade to blade dance with. She used the bones of the hive to carve her way through their... Regions. Yeah, that was pretty badass. Um, before she was <laughs> cut down. Shin Malfer... Eh... Another big argument on that one. Well, I'm assuming. Shut it. I'm assuming. I'm there. assuming Justin on. is going to go into that one. So we'll move on. Shinobu, we already talked about, and Tevis, we already talked about. So <laughs> that is the end of what I have knocked marked down to talk about from the grimoire. So heads up, the rest of the show is going to be Justin and probably all of us just arguing about. Two individuals in particular. Fight. Specifically fight, two. Fight. Two individuals. No. Oh, my gosh. It's not. Actually, yeah, okay, no. I'm okay. sorry. I see let's, what you're saying. Let's, nope, let's rearrange nope. that. No. Three individuals. No, no, uh, Three here we individuals. Go. Is this yes, when I sir. take my nap and you wake me up when they're Bell, done? Do you, no, you're going to probably want to get in a few. You're going to probably have a few thoughts on this one. Okay. All right. This you're is what I want the one. Twitter followers, as well as anybody that's in the chat, um, to go ahead and weigh in on, there has been a very hot topic, we'll say. And we're also about, gonna, we're going to preface this also with this conversation is not going to be resolved by the end of this show. No, no, <laughs> no. Like, I, I want or, this to last. Like, this as is going to be a. To. I mean, this this but is still going I want on in our chat. As many people as possible to weigh in, um, because there is a good amount of people that think that. Dredgen Yor murdered, um, not Shin Malfer. Shin Malfer, of course, finally took him out Don't many see. years later. But uh, um, Jaron Ward, Jaron Ward, who uh, some people on the other half of the side think that Jaron Ward and Dredgen Malfer or Dredgen Yor are the same person. So, if you're following us on Twitter, if you're in the chat right now on Twitch, if you're in the chat on Band, throw your thoughts in there, just yes or no. And, okay, let me, let me also hang, hang on, hang on real quick. Before we get into this, I'm just going to reiterate this because Pen, Penn's made a point too. We are going to disagree on this. Like, there is going to be people on multiple sides of the conversation Loud Absolutely. Noises. And, and yeah, and the the <laughs> the one thing that I'm just gonna say, I will I will be just as passionate in my arguments as probably anybody else here. But the one thing that I will not no I, I no I, I'm trying really hard to be tactful on this one. Be civil, okay? We play nice or bunny kicks your butt. Yeah, or I will unleash bunny. And also, you don't, you know, or don't be a dick. You know, That's yeah. a basic rule. It, it, it's it's the golden Wait, rule. Wait, he's allowed to say that word, and I'm not. What the? <laughs> <laughs> Bell's leaving. <laughs> you said it kind of early, though. That was the after oh, schoolers you didn't were tell still me around. As as every okay, as the night goes on, we can say whatever. <laughs> I will remember that for this conversation. So. But yeah, I mean that's that's it's all about time. I do though. I do, I do want to preface that. Timing. I mean it's it's just you know in in absolute seriousness, we are going to have disagreements. Um, the the problem isn't having a disagreement because this is all opinions. I mean honestly, it's about a game. It, it when in the end of the day, when you put everything down, it's about a game. Mm-hmm. It's your opinion. It it doesn't actually it doesn't actually hurt you in real life. No. Be be considerate and be polite and realize that the other people on the other side of the screen are human beings. They have emotions. They have feelings just like you do. 
And if it gets heated, you know, just back off, just, just take a break. And I, and we, we've had, and so that's, that's the disclaimer for this because we did have a very heated debate in the chat. It, it, it got a little out of hand. It was resolved. We've got it all. You know, everyone. I wouldn't go okay. as far as out of hand. Well, I it got warm. True. It got it got pretty warm. I, I I will. Okay, Willie, that's 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 a fair point. It, it got it got close to getting out of hand. Um, and it just made it made me realize, especially I was like, yeah, people get passionate about this stuff. So, passionate is not a problem. It's when you get offensive. That's when it gets to be a problem. So, it just I mean. I'm just going to get off the soapbox at that point, but that's, that's yeah, my the disclaimer. The star but, comes across the screen and says, the more you know. Yeah. I'm going to So, that being said, Justin, I think his potato internet decided to play games with him. Well, it's just not, I, I'm, I'm back. back. I have yeah. the yeah. internet. I'm back. Okay. No, so no, no. Who, and who are the same person now? What? <laughs> all right. So, all right. Sorry, so, I, there Bo. was a long spiel and I forgot who we're talking nope. about now. All right, Justin. All right, we're talking Bo, about Drift. Yeah, go for it, Justin. Okay. So, first and foremost, um, the last word cards, awesome. Uh, they all center around a town called Palamon that existed in the city age. Um, and most of it's told through the eyes of Shin Malfour, who uh, is awesome. But, uh, he was a young child when Jaron Ward came into his life, who was a hunter. Uh, that's revealed on this show tonight. It's confirmed. Uh, and <laughs> uh, and then they come into contact with Dreg, Dregden Yor. Um, and there's a lot of speculation about Jaron Ward and Dregden Yor. Do y'all want to start with the last word cards? Wait, wait, wait. So wait, is it that you're saying that Dregden Yor and... Jaron Ward right. are the same person, or the <laughs> no. all right. The, the the popular belief, the two beliefs are because I, I believe the most popular belief and the one that I stick with as well is the fact that Dredgen Yor Dredgen because the D is before the G. Uh, Justin, silent. By it's the silent. Way, silent. It's silent. Um, and then they're they're saying that him and Jaron Ward are the same person. Um, and then you have, you know, they are not the same person, which I think I got that backwards. But yes, that that's the argument. Are Jaron Ward and Dredgen Ward the same person? And they they take place in a very specific time, which we can't exactly pinpoint. Timeline. But it's when, yeah, yeah the, the timeline is like when being on Earth was like being in the Wild West again. You know, you have the last word card, which says yours, not mine, which was the renegade hunter Shin Malford or Dredgen Yor during the showdown at Dwindler's Wit Ridge. It was also and Ward's comment to Loken. Well, we shot get him. there. Well, at least I hope we get there. That's so, awesome. so um, yeah, that is a badass card. So the first last word card when you attain the weapon is the last word is a romantic weapon, a throwback to simpler times when steady aim and large rounds were enough to dispense justice in the wilds of the lawless frontier. Of course, some might say that that time has come again. And that's the uh, last word card, which, you know, there's so much here that uh, we have to get into. Justin, you got the next one pulled up. We'll go ahead and we'll do the, uh, yes. if you have it available, last word cards first. Yeah, I've got uh, last word two. Um, what about last word fragment one? Uh, let me see. I've got that too. Yeah. You to answer. Ghost fragment last word. It doesn't say one, so it screwed me up. Uh, and this is pretty much testimony by Shin Malfour. I'm writing this from memory. Some mine, but not all. The facts won't sync with reality but they'll be close and there's no one to say otherwise. So for all intents and purposes, this will be the history of a settlement called Palamon and the horrors that followed an all too brief peace. I remember home and the stories of paradise. We'd all get to see someday of a city shining. Even in the night, Palamon didn't shine, but it was a sanctuary of a sort. We'd settled in the heart of a range that stretched the horizon 
Wooded mountains that shot with purpose towards the sky. Winters were harsh, but the trees and peaks hid us from the world. We talked about moving on, sometimes striking out for the city. But it was just a longing. Drifters came and went. On occasion they would stay, but rarely. We had no, no real government, but there was rule of law. Basic tenets agreed upon uh, by all and eventually uh, overseen by Magistrate Lockin. And there you have it. No government until there was. I was young, so I barely understood. I remember Lokin as a hardworking man who just became broken. Most, mostly I think he was sad, sad and frightened. As his fingers tightened on Palamon, people left. Those who stayed saw our days become gray. Lokin's protection from the fallen, from ourselves, became dictatorial. Looking back, I think maybe Loken had just lost too much of himself, his family, but everyone lost something, and some of us had nothing to begin with. My only memory of my parents is a haze, like a daydream and a small light, like the spark of their souls. It's not anything I dwell on. They left me early, taken by dregs. Palamon raised me from there. The family I call my own, called my own, cared for me even as if I was their natural-born son. And life was good, being the only life I knew. My judgment is skewed, and it wasn't easy, pocked by loss as it was, but I would call it good. Until, of course, it wasn't. Until two men entered my world, one a light, the other the darkest shadow I would ever know. And so, the main thing you need to take from there, though, real quick is that the, the very first paragraph, the fact that Shin admits, I'm writing this from memory, some mine but not all, that the facts won't sync with reality, but they'll be close. But since there's no one to say otherwise, you know, that's the history of Palamon, pretty much saying, so, well, I'm the only one to live, so this is how yeah, it went, yeah. period. Can I just ask, so, so just real quick here, just I'm on the same page. People who believe that there's the same person, are they believing that he, like, one died and came back as no. the other? No, okay, so... Or I are can... we going multiple personality disorder here? Multiple that personality. I get multiple, oh, multiple well, personality. That I could get behind. Okay, well, it's more, it's more of... Okay. Preface, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. Um, it's more of the, like, an Anakin to Darth Vader fall. You know, it's, it's the same person, but you can say Darth Vader murdered Anakin because the darkness overpowered the light within him. See, I would almost read it the other way that I'm saying is like that he actually lived with both at the same time. Yeah. He did. And there's, there is a grimoire just, but, card that comments on the fact that he walks and he has a sadness. And I think it's uh, last word three. It actually talks about he walks and he looks like he's full of light, but inside of him, a darkness is growing. Right, yes. and what what was just read also definitely reads like saying that it's some of the memories are mine and some are others, and are that's technically and, his, but like they're they're in a locked somewhere else that he maybe he can well, access. And this is not, this is this is from Shin's point, so this isn't yeah. from hit from yeah exactly. Oh. When you go to Thorn, um, you know if you grab Thorn, it says to run one's enemies is to see them not as equals but objects, hollow of the spirit and meaning, which is the thirteen understanding of the seventh book of sorrow which we all know the books of sorrow also you know a lot of those were about the hive and well, how they came to be in the but same. more importantly the thorn as well as the uh, bad juju are weapons of sorrow right. which is what it more focuses on right. and uh, it says about the thorn augmented through dark practices Thorn was once a hero's weapon. Its jagged frame hints at a sinister truth, a powerful connection to unutterable sorceries of the hive. The legend of Thorn is bound to rise and fall Judge Dredgenor, a guardian whose name is remembered with disgust and shame. The weapon was thought destroyed, but rumors of its existence still haunt the wilds. So, it, there's that. You know, the Thorn was... Yours weapon, which I personally believe it fed off of the light, especially considering it was powered by the hive, um, which we all know they try to use the light against us. But in the King's Fall raid, 
you know, you touch the blighted light, and that's what actually does the most damage to orcs, is the fact that you free the light and you let it go. And when you let it go, it, you know, goes to help you destroy orcs rather than just go floof about like a warlock would probably do. Um, and here with Thorn, it, it that's exactly pretty much the story of Dredgen Yor, except the big thing is when it comes down to Dredgen Yor himself and his original name, they redact it because they don't want that in the tower records. So there, there's a we few conversations we're getting to. They don't redact. Yeah. I mean, this isn't the first thing. Well, it's the first thing historically in the game, but it's not the only thing that we found that they've redacted. I mean, for yeah, God's sakes, they've, they've, they redacted an entire subclass because they didn't want to talk about them. But the the other point that I would make is I know there was there was a lot of contention around the concept of whether or not these cards could be trusted because of that quote. And I would make the point of this is an eyewitness account. Um, it's it's an eyewitness account. That's what it is. And any eyewitness account is is susceptible to a misperception of the scenario, which is why you have multiple people give eyewitness accounts because then by combining different perspectives, you get the actual picture. The problem is there aren't other people. Well, except, I mean, there are because he makes a comment, this is not just my memories. These are other memories. Um, I would I would just put that in there no. too as well you can you All can right. argue the the accuracy of his recollection of his recollection and the accuracy of his aggregate uh recounting of the days of palamon because that's what it is it's some of it's his memory and some of it's been told to him i have memories of being uh bathed in the sink by my mom i don't have those memories firsthand they were related to me by her and then now I have an image in my head. So some of these some of these memories or some of these things he's telling, they're not straight from his brain. But the one thing I take issue with is when you call him a liar for this statement at the beginning of of this whole card. He's not a liar. He's giving you the information in the best way he knows how. Whether it's spot on picture perfect, he's a kid. People seem taller, buildings seem, you know, bigger. You know, it's it's not going to be one hundred percent accurate. Is my point right? You know, and and but yes, but to say that it's and, and I agree to say that it's an outright lie is to swing the pendulum in the entirely opposite direction. I mean, re- I mean, realize also, you know, down that vein, the books of sorrow is a freaking religious text about the deity who is writing the books of sorrow. I mean. In the same vein that we can't trust everything that's in these cards, we can't trust everything that's in the Books of Sorrows by that same application of logic. Yeah. So as long as you're okay doing that, then I don't have a problem with it. I mean, and, you know, that's admittedly part of the argument. But, that I mean, I, I would say that would be the... That would be my qualification is, I mean, we, we have a freaking passage in the Books of Sorrow where another entity bald facely says all these books are lies yeah so yeah i I mean i'll just i'll i'll stop talking can i ask another question go for it is there are there any cards or any information that we can find where a person like a third person is ever in the presence of the two of them at the same time because every time that i see something it's always like after uh Jaren was was killed, right? And it's it's, it's always like that, there's never anything placing them at the same time in the same location by a is, third person that I can find yet. There yeah, is that's... the conversation. I mean, so the only thing, yeah, other than Sh- yeah, that's Pins, pretty much it. Is, it Pins put the, um, put but Shin's not chat. even actually there when correct his go- uh, ward's he shows ghost up is after, though. and then he ends up meeting um, your. You're later on. Yeah. Right. And here's here's the other interesting part for me is in the last word three, Shin makes a point of saying that Ward's ghost never talked to them. 
he never spoke to any of them other than Ward, and it was only very brief words for Ward. There's another there's a, a another comment that I have about that later, but the point that I'm making here is so at the beginning right here he says, you know, this is my memories and others. However, at the end of the last word three, Shin is approached by Ward's ghost. Now we know this is after Ward's been killed and after a conversation between Ward and Yor, in which the ghost has been instructed to give quote the sword the gunslinger sword end quote to the boy um but it ends with him making a comment that the ghost spoke to him and so i'm I'm wondering if the other memories that he's talking about in these cards are actually the ghost because the ghost well because the ghost is said to be um always silent always judging but not us like judging the moment and so the, i mean the ghost is recording what is going on and i i i use that and i know willie and i kind of and I, I need to reread well, the thorn cards admittedly but i took that as the ghost is gauging the the darkness within ward and trying to figure right. out what exactly is going on and then you know then the accusations that are later between this ghost and well, your kind of make more sense to me. Can you me, imagine what it would be like to be the ghost of somebody who is divided like that? Yeah, it, like, it makes me that, think you know, of because, the, because uh, the connection that it's, it, it, the way that it reads, the connection between a, a ghost and mm-hmm. their guardian, I mean, it's a pretty strong connection. Yeah, I, I always And so, like, if you're as, dealing with a person who is split between good and, and evil in that way or whatever is going on, if that is the same person, I mean, that's he has, first of all, that ghost has every right to judge. And secondly, like, he's kind of stuck in a really weird situation. And so, like, it, it would... I wish that the card didn't just end with, and it smoke, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, no, I believe me, you and I, I are on the same, same page there. <laughs> but uh, the, and, other, the um, other thing is, before, on the relationship with the ghost and the guardian, I always take it to... I, I've kind of said it tongue-in-cheek, but I view the Guardian as being a, a space, a science fiction lich, and the Ghost as being our phylactery, which is a uh, speak English at me. I'm trying. I'm, going, I'm, I'm searching. <laughs> that was not English. I'm searching phylactery? my brain for a definition. Hang on. Hang on. A phylactery. A phylactery is, is like a, nub? a. Oh my gosh! No, it's not a nug. A nug. Oh my gosh. Nug. Sorry. Nug. Um, a phylactery. Like a nub. Nug. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you in just a second. Um, Show me a your lich, nugs. No, it's a... <laughs> oh my gosh, you guys. Um, a phylactery is the storage unit that a lich uses to store a piece of itself that makes it mortal. So in uh, fantasy, liches are able to... Usually it's the heart. Usually they take their heart out and they store it in a phylactery. And then they keep that phylactery in a very protected, very secure place because they themselves, their bodies, they can't die. They are undead. Box. Yeah, I guess I, I'd never read Harry Potter, but Pins is saying it's like a horcrux. Oh, a horcrux? I don't know what All that right, is. All right, we're going to go. Okay. But anyways. <laughs> that makes more sense. Thank you, Pins. I get that better than phylactery. Phylactery. Yeah, old factory. sounds like a fart factory oh or something. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, well, I was going to go ahead and... No, nah, don't. 86 so that. Sorry. Um, but the the thing I want to point out is... Uh, Bell, have you read The Last Word or The Thorn um, stories through and yes. through? Yes. I've participated okay. in, actually, audio grammar for some of them. But yes. Nice. All right, awesome. so the the one <laughs> argument that's brought up to me a lot is to go ahead and read okay i apologize because i had the wrong one up first i guess it's supposed to be thorn four first and then you go ahead and go into okay there it is and then you go into thorn three because we only have about six ten minutes maybe to go um which you know the type is a transcript for, we're going to go Thorn 4, then four, Thorn 3. Parties 2. One is a ghost type, designated to redacted. The other one is a guardian type class, redacted. And uh, 
the ghost obviously is supposed to be someone's ghost and oh I just noticed that said so that's redacted that's interesting but we'll go ahead and go into it <clears throat> guardian type class redacted is uh we'll go ahead and say Lou what would you say would be a safe way to go about it for these should, think, I, yeah. sh should I go A, B, 1, 2 or I'll be honest. These things always confuse the ever living hell out of me. Reading. These All right. Things. Well, we, we know for sure. Like, All right. We're going to go ahead. When it's the way it's labeled. Yeah, that's what I'm yeah, trying. Yeah, I, I don't understand. We're going to go ahead and go uh, because we know for a fact that U two is supposed to be. Oh yeah, no, 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 I get this. Okay, yeah, I can be. And you want me to read you, one line and you read the other? Yeah, be the ghost blue because you sound well, like a ghost. Which one is that? U one. And you know what? Hey, Justin, do you have the card up? Uh, Thorn 4? Yeah, Thorn 4. Yes. Yes, I do. Oh, God. All right, why why don't you be dredging yet? Take it Look away. This. this makes Boys. me feel like he's like the little meme that's like, now kiss. Oh, this going to be good. <laughs> oh. All right, All right so, Luke. so such darkness. Impressed. Far from. Mm -hmm. To each their own. His light is faded. His light. Is gone. You are an infection. <laughs> I am that which will cleanse. You are a monster. <laughs> Sorry, I, I lost it. <laughs> Blue is Dinklebot reincarnated. Uh, hey, an old friend once saw me as the same. He was right. And had we met earlier, so too would you be. You dare defend yourself? All you've done, as anything but monstrous... <laughs> No more than a hurricane. <laughs> I'm sorry. The bell's killing me. This isn't supposed to be funny, I don't think, but it no, is. No, it's not, but that's our specialty here. <laughs> that's what my wife said about my wedding vows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> keep going. I don't know if I can. I'm going to try. What the, that's what the preacher said. <laughs> oh, okay, go. And you're a force of nature? I'm all that is right. You may not see it. For lack of looking or blind ignorance, but I am all that is good. You've just murdered a good man. Han shot first. He shot first. <laughs> thank you, thank he you. shot good first. Job. I just. <laughs> holy shit. Uh, man. I should have known, dude. <laughs> Yet you stand. Guess he missed. He never misses. First time for everything. Your line blue. Silence. There was silence. It says silence. Oh, okay. His cannon. There's, there's Bell's line. Bell's, nice Bell's piece the silence. Of, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't get my stage directions. Uh, his his cannon. Nice piece of hardware. Well well worn, but clean. Smooth hammer. I don't understand this. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I was about to say, that prize. was Justin again. Yeah, so. There you go. Oh, I see. The one. Yep. The one you is the it. ghost. The yeah, two sure. is you me. Got it. Now, yeah. okay, everyone just now, heard the light. Now take click. it home. This could have been like a rehearsed type thing. Yeah. Uh, no, we could have gotten a little bit more warning, Willie. So you, I think it's your line, Blue, because I said well worn but clean, smooth hammer. It was his prize. Guess he put too much faith in the wrong steel. Is that where your faith lies? In steel? Not for some time. My steel is only an extension. My faith is in the shadow. Then my light is an affront to all you are. I am your truest enemy. One of many. Would you end me? Not you. Not now. The shadow knows mercy. The shadow knows no such thing. Then what? The other. What other? The dead man's charge. The boy? You'd end him as well. If it comes to that, we'll see. I won't let you have the child. Been long enough now. Think maybe he's a man. You cannot have him. Not yet. I won't let you. That you could stop me is an amusing thought. Here. Take it. Why? Give the apprentice his mastered sword. It's a gift. You cannot have him. You fear for his light? He is special? Yes. 
I am aware. You're trying to tempt him. You're feeding his anger. The gun is a memento, nothing more. You claim to be a vessel, a hollow shell where once a man stood, but that is just a lie. The man is still in you. There's no man here. I am now, for the rest of time, only dragged in your... The eternal abyss. So not all the forgotten languages are dead. Hide behind whatever titles you wish. It is still... It is all still a facade. No force of nature would play such games. Games? The cannon. You wish to tempt the boy, to spur him on and fuel his rage. There is intent there. The actions of a man, monstrous, mad, or otherwise. You are nothing more. And what value does your conclusion bring, flawed as it may be? That a hurricane can only be weathered, not stopped, not redirected. A force of nature is uncaring and without intent. But a man? Yes. A man is none of those things. A man can be killed. And there it is. There what is? A sliver of hope. Those are your last words. Blammo. And this leads me to believe that Dregden actually wanted to catch one in the dome. Yeah, I get. Oh, yeah. I, I kind of get that feeling. I think he's... Well, I mean, it makes that kind of encourages my sense of him being a Darth Vader type figure. Is he understands? I mean, he he is evil, but he still has sentience, and he understands that that is all right. Now, now for the sake of your side of the argument, Blue, about them being the same person, right? Does anybody else have Thorn Three up? Because then we can roll. Hang on, Bell has a theory. Bell has a theory. Okay. To me, this entire thing just kind of reads even more. It makes me wonder if they are the same person. I mean, this whole thing literally just seems to feed that for me. I mean, it's, it's, it's literally him sitting here talking to this ghost and the ghost saying, I like that other guy. I don't like this guy. This guy is bad. You're letting him win. You used to be human. You used to be a man. And now you're letting this darkness just take you over. And when he sits there and if you're saying he wanted to die... What if he was trying to actually kill the dragon your side of himself right. and messed up? Dragon your side of himself took over in that moment and killed the wrong person. Right. And the other thing is is again, we all I, I I'm I read this as Ward's ghost and we have another mm-hmm. person saying that Ward's ghost didn't talk to anybody except for Ward. Like that's that's my understanding. Th- this ghost doesn't right. talk to anybody except for Ward and well, the, way he's ta- the ghost is talking. This is the way that a ghost talks to their guardian. Right. If you like if, throughout the game, if you listen to the way that your ghost talks to you versus the way that your ghost interacts with other people, first of all, most of them don't interact. Like your ghost doesn't actually talk that often to other people. If you think about it, like he, he interacts through you more than anything else. He talks at you and you communicate at others. Right. And, no, the stranger and there's a, and there's a, talks to a stranger. A tiny bit. Yeah. But the way that he talks to the stranger, the way that he talks to other people, is very different than the way that he talks to you. There is a different type of relationship yeah. in the way that it, that's communicated. And this is too deep for a random person to be talking to this ghost. I don't think a ghost would go this much into a conversation and get this I judgmental right. of a random I was, person. I was just about to say that. I, I feel... I feel judgment rolling off this ghost. Yes. And I don't see ghosts as judging. I mean, well, no. they judge, but not like, not personally. They wouldn't probably walk up to your, well, float up to your face and say, you're an a hole. I mean, it's just, they're not, it doesn't read right to me. And I, and this, this ghost knows you're too well. Like, you can tell he, he's been in his head. And that's where ghosts, like, at least in my mind, that's kind of where ghosts reside for us, is they, they, they know us they're a part of us in a certain sense this ghost knows your and to me the only way he would know your is if they're the same person yeah you know i just just thought about this but so tie tie back in the theory you know from osiris that the ghost actually manipulate memories what what if there's a grain of truth to that what if the ghost manipulates memories? I mean, that that would mean for, for me, because I view these as, you know, the same people, which I, I mean, it's just my theory. But 
that would mean that the ghosts actually could have been the cause of this. Well, we do know that Bungie really, really enjoys um, rampant AI. And if we view the ghost as a form of an AI, if we're that connected to them, then yes, that would make perfect sense, actually, if they stuck with their normal theme. Right. Except, <laughs> well, yeah, and I guess technically the the domain wasn't really Bungie's concept either, was it? Well, that I'm just saying, name a game that Bungie has made that didn't have that going on. Well, that's fair enough. I don't. I don't remember. Oh, the, I don't yeah, remember the yes story of Marathon. No. I mean, how but, many games do they actually make? Bungie? Well, they had Marathon, and Marathon was. Yeah, there is Marathon. Yeah, okay, okay. Basically, I don't remember the AI. Touché. I don't remember AI story. Do I do like a mini marathon. mic drop there? Mini mic drop. <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, you might as well. And that's so, the thing is, like, we've, we've had a lot of connect. We've had a lot of connections, obviously, between Halo and Destiny. Um, but no, oh, Justin's Justin's being. Bad Justin. Um, yeah, Durandell. That was that. Okay, yeah, I know. And pins, pins made the point. Yeah, Marathon did have a rampant AI. I just could, I couldn't remember if Marathon had one. And yeah, and I mean, so I don't know. That just made me think. You know, when you said that ghosts reside in our heads, it made me remember Osiris. That was one of the accusations that Osiris actually had against the Traveler and the ghosts was that they manufactured memories which would make more compliant guardians, and. It, that's an interesting theory. If you follow that theory and then follow this information, that would indicate that the ghost actually created a character in which was susceptible to fall to the antithesis of the traveler. Like they created a defective weapon. Well, and if you think about it, why else when you, when you wake up as a guardian, why are we so just like, okay, I'm going to go follow this ghost that's telling me these things and I'm going to go do this, even though like I was freaking dead in a car. Like, why Why do we just suddenly go, okay, ghost, whatever you say, I'm a guardian now. Lead the still, way. I still refer back to the 8-bit short that... <laughs> well, I, can't, I cannot remember what it's called, but I need to find it again. because What's the alternative, freak, though? Freaking, yeah, no, that's, and that's why I... Destiny. What's the that? one where he wakes up. He wakes up and he's like, destiny. what am I doing? He's like, what Why the hell here? are you? <laughs> Why am I here? <laughs> and the ghost just zaps him real quick. And it's like, he wakes up someone else. And the other okay. dude's like, hey, who are you? I'm your ghost. Okay. okay. Yay. But, <laughs> but we, he, he's just like all about it. We assume that, that guardians are chose for their heroism and their battle prowess. What if they're just chose for their pliability? For their, well, and that's that's what Osiris was arguing. Was, adaptability. Yeah, and, I mean. and that's what I was going to point out way earlier, Blue, is that like Osiris says, says that. How much of a guardian's memory is their memory? And how, how much, much of it is fabricated by your ghost? You don't wait, know. Wait. And, so is it easier and, to take over Exos? Like is it, are Exos like the ones that you want for oh, hunters? Because really you can basically just like that? program them. <laughs> You would almost. I'm, oh wow, that's a whole nother bag of worms. That's going back. I'm sorry. In the okay, no totally worms. Throw the worms back in the bucket. Stick with uh, the refrigerator. We're I would actually next argue. Week. I would actually. Yeah. I would actually argue that no, it would be more difficult. But uh, I guess it depends on how you understand the programming from a psychological right. standpoint, or how full cool their memory already is. Right. Exactly. Because you have to take into account the Deepstone Crypt, and that assumes that X. Well. Yeah, that would assume that the EXO was not already... Yeah, EXOs are weird, because I actually have questions about EXO Guardians, because no. technically EXOs are dead humans, so they've already died. So how do you resurrect a dead human when it's already... And like, because EXOs don't die, they're immortal. I mean, we have Grimoire cards where they, they are talking about the curse of being immortal. And so how does an EXO Guardian exists because we know that in order to be a guardian you have to die so that the ghost can resurrect you but you're talking about a race of a of immortal war machines but think well, about that's where the though. reprogramming would come in right yeah, Sorry, yeah think about the oh no i was just gonna say what dies that that makes you cease to be you right and i mean that's my your, that's, your that's brain the question is like essentially but so. an exo but an exo technically doesn't have a brain they have a cpu well, that's it, though. My computer's close to dying. Which, it, well, we know, but but that's why they do the Deepstone Crypt is because it's the you know the, we and we've we talked about this in the Saint fourteen episode too is because that was that's the defragging of the EXO, basically, 
I mean, if you think about it, that's actually right. what it literally is. Is the default? We're getting out of focus fire. And hey, focus. Is, uh, all right. Sorry. It, it is well after one as well. No, it's. Uh, can I just me. list my my just one or two qualms with the whole? Uh, they're the same person, Dragnet and Jared. And right, it's are not your that, qualms for or against? Against. <laughs> all right, go against. for it. Uh, <laughs> it's not that I vehemently think that they're different people. It's not that I think that it's a dumb idea. It's there's a couple of things that just give me pause. Um, the first of which is the last word three. Um, if you just read through last word three, which I'm not going to read through word by word, but they're clearly chasing somebody. And behind them, the city of Palamon has been burned to the ground. Um, now, if Jaren and Dregden are the same person, either way, I believe they're trace, they're chasing Dregden. You are. That's, that's what I get out of this card. Um, if they are the same person, they've been lied to. Jaren saying, hey, this guy burned down the whole village. We've got to go catch him when he knows it was really himself. Um, Unless Jaren's not super aware of it. Yeah, he might not be because super aware there's of a, it. There's a, there's a book called um, Three, and it, it's a really – I don't want to ruin it. Dang it. Okay, don't ever read the book right now. This is a huge spoiler here, but it's kind of important because I keep going to it. There's this book called Three, and the entire time it's like these three characters, one's super bad, one's a female, one's a male who's the main character. And the entire book you're going through thinking like, the female's really nice, and the guy's kind of like a dweeb. And then there's this really bad guy who's like stalking the good guy. At the end you find out they're all the same person, but they were never, ever aware (laughs) of it. And that they actually end up killing each other, right? So all I keep going to is that book every single time that you guys bring this up. And it's like, you know, when you do have multiple personality disorder or whatever form of that we're dealing with here, but if you're looking at it from the actual, like, the way we understand it in real life here, not necessarily in the game, many times one personality is aware of another, but that other one is not aware of the original one or vice versa. There's many times. So it's very possible, like, even within that, the card, the, you're talking about three here, I think, right, is that, there's even a point where they make a point about that Jaren goes off on his own for a long time and leaves everybody else hanging out. And that's when he has gone to face his death. Like he, it, it could have even been either he became aware and he intentionally went off to do this on his own sort of to, to, to actually confront his other side or something just kind of convinced him to, because if you think about it, if you're sharing a personality in your head, even if you're not fully aware of that other personality existing as his own entity, you probably still have some connections, right? I mean, if you think about it in a creepy way, like whenever we have little, like, our conscience or we have some drive to do something even if we don't understand it, in a sense that could be, you know, say that that conscience or that drive or that separate feeling broke off and be, really became strong on its own. That's the way I kind of read this. Right, is that there's like they're always everybody has parts in themselves that are different than each other, right? Like there's, there's days where you can be a complete jerk, and there are days that you're a super nice person. Different things trigger you, and you don't always understand why. And that's kind of the way that I imagine this is that something broke off on him, whether it was because of his ghost or whatever it was. He may not, Jaren may not be completely aware of it, but he's still got signals to go do this. I, and that's I could- where. And the thing that kills me about that is just the fact that, like, when you have that conversation where the murder takes place, um, the people that are murdered act like they've never seen the gun that kills everybody, you know, before. Um, They all act like they don't know who either Jaren or if it's Jaren, they don't know who he is. You know, if it's Shredgen, Shredgen was supposedly mystery the whole time anyway. But, you know, they they ask him outright, I believe it is, that somewhere along lines, this is how you treat complete strangers. Like, you know, you're you're not hospitable. You're you're kind of an ass. But I can't keep getting into this. It is way late over here. And I have (laughs) got to get to bed before I die. Let's wrap wrap it up for tonight. And then what we'll do is I'll put a... uh, as much as I'm probably going to get salt thrown at me in this chat, I'll put a uh, dredged in your and Jiren 
ward. That needs to happen on on the pole. Come back to that happen, one. Yes, Bell. You, yes. <laughs> Bell. Just for the record, you have a standing invitation to any of these. So, oh, you yes. may, you may. Re- okay, whoever, who is it? It's really late for. Is that is that Willie? Really? Yes, You're gonna hate I'm on the fact Eastern that time. he said that. <laughs> you may want to start <laughs> earlier. <laughs> so, just just real quick, um, just to kind of wrap it up. Uh, Willie, why don't why don't you go ahead and show, get, give your shout outs, and then you can, if you want, you can just take off. I'm okay. sorry that I kept cutting you off about your point. I suck at it. Oh no, you're all right because <laughs> this this whole Dredge and Yor and Jaren Ward, this is a battle that needs to go into two hours into a, of itself. If if um, that, I mean, yeah, I mean, there could be more than two hours for sure on on the subject. But I'll go ahead and do my shout outs, of course, to Dad to Destiny. Uh KP. The man is immortal. I don't know how he does what he does. I'm pretty sure his version of sleeping is just kinda lurking in the DOD chat, seeing what's going on and then when he he's wakes up he he has to be an exo. That's the only explanation for it. <laughs> um of course Foxtrot just started a raid school back up, so looking forward to that. And um, Ishtar Collective, because that's where I get all my information from, is uh, ishtar-collective.net. Which, and they are actually know. also on Twitter now. Yeah, and that is ish-coll. Ish, it's Ishtar, Ishtar C-O-L-L, I think. I, I, I was pretty sure it's ish-coll. I'll put, it, I'll put um, a link up in the chat. In the, yeah, Show we'll notes. get a link up for you, Star Collective. Sorry that we suck at life. Um, <laughs> and on that note, you know, Bill, thanks so much for joining us. It was definitely awesome to have you on board. Aw, thank you. And, you know, then we, of course, have Blue and Justin, which, you know, to hell with you guys, but I love oh, you anyway. Oh, oh. <laughs> it's just Ishtar, C-O-L-L, if it's the correct one. If it yeah. follows me and I fill it back, that's yep, the right that's one. that's the one. That's a par- <laughs> That's a parody. That's a parody. All right, there it goes. I was wrong. It's late. Like I said, it's it's tomorrow morning for me. So Ishtar C O L L. Follow them on Twitter. Guys are awesome. They uh, they they just put everything in order. So pretty, like, and so fun to read. So you know, thanks Ishtar Collective. Thanks Foxtrot for Foxtrot, and thanks Bell for joining us. I'm sure you'll join us when we have the. Uh, Dredge and Yor and Jaren Ward argument once again because this <laughs> is down. definitely not over. Yeah, this is going to be a throwdown of the age. It's going sure. to be a fisticuffs. <laughs> it, it might come down to that blue. So, yeah. I mean, I know worries. All right. And then, um, Bill, we usually do shout outs. What, well, I guess also you're, you're pretty well known. So, most people listening to us who are on, on our level probably already know who you are. So, <laughs> But just in case, where where can people find you? Everywhere. I'm everywhere. No, um, pretty much everywhere. If you just search Bell Bunny, it will come up. Um, Twitter this is the only one that's like a little bit different. It's B E one one E Bunny. But if you just type in Bell Bunny, I should show up as well. And um, I don't know. I guess my shout outs would be uh, all the millions of things I'm part of, Dames and Safe Gamers and Guardian Radio and rectify gaming and I don't know everything <laughs> but also like a huge thank you to you guys for having me on um it's really cool to be here and talk about this stuff because like I've always really I've, like almost like I like lore but I've always been like afraid to get into it because I'm like I'm not one of those people where I can actually get obsessed 24 7 like all of you people I can only do it like when I'm talking about it in the moment right but then I realize I get super into it and now I want to go read like all of the hunter cloaks so I should probably just start doing it all the time so thank you for bringing that up to me again mm-hmm. and, and <laughs> but, you know that's why we do the chat too so right that's, that's what we try to we try to get people I just in can't there. keep up with that crap because problem is I can't I can't leave my notifications on because I have I have like thousands of dames <laughs> on there as like 
on band as well. So if I put notifications on my phone, like I literally have 84,000 notifications in band oh right now. Oh my God. <laughs> See, um, I'm not the only thing. one who has insane amount of notifications. It's, it's, yeah. th- and then I also have Slack on top of that where Safe Gamers oh, and yeah. Rectify are. So it's like, I can't. Like today when I popped into the chat and said hi, I was like, I don't know why I even said hi because I probably won't be able to check back because I won't be able to sit here looking at my phone. If I turn notifications on, my phone dies in about an hour. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I promise I'll be around more because this was a lot of fun and uh, I like keeping Willie up, you know, so that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Justin's awesome. He's my new best friend. So sorry. Woo-hoo! Networking skills. <laughs> <laughs> If you love hunters, you basically have automatically become like my best friend. So. Oh yeah, you've got to, you've got to like <laughs> throwing knives at things. <laughs> but no, Blue, thank you for having me on, even though you were scared to invite me. Never be scared. Yes. And yes, I just, I just threw that out there. You're welcome. Yeah. No, I just didn't. I <laughs> nah. Uh, that's what periscoping does. Is it makes me drink what while is, I do things. Wh- and- wait, 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 wait. What is periscoping? Periscoping kind of- is like Sounds it's really like bad, live. It? It's like <laughs> yeah. yeah it's just, oh god. Well, I have another friend, and his first question when he logged onto the periscope is, um, "Where's your where's your effing submarine costume?" Yes, I was like, I don't, I don't. Oh, I get. It's a it's the new it's one of the newer apps that Twitter does. It's like streaming for Twitter. Oh. That's about my knowledge of it, and apparently. It's supposed to be more about like you're you're walking around your house or you're having like you just like it's not supposed to be this like super official thing really it's kind of more like a, here's like a be a stalker into my life when I let you. Oh, yeah. wow. so the only the only downside to it is you have to be on Wi-Fi and oh my god if you don't have your phone plugged in it drains your battery like nothing mm-hmm. else. Oh, okay, so cool. and your Wi-Fi has to be really good otherwise it it gets really angry. Yeah, but it, it's a, it's a cool little thing to just kind of be like, hey, I just feel like casually chatting with some people instead of making like all this time to make a video or a stream set up or, and then and people can just like there's only I think it even has a limit of how many people can be in your chat at one time, so it keeps it kind of more intimate and you can send little hearts to people and except you don't and, get to choose your color. No, but I always get purple no matter what. I blue, hate I don't you so much. I get purple. I and get green be- and orange <laughs> and red, and I was like, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, this is effing stupid like i want freaking blue nope nope some random other person gets it i'm like (sighs) Uh, (laughs) bell he's so anal about the the color blue when i was gonna build him when i was gonna oh she'll be proud of me for this she'll be proud of me for this one yeah when i was gonna do his emblem he literally had to send me the the rgb value for the color he wanted yes and and you know what you know what color it was (laughs) It was the TARDIS blue. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> like, it has to be official. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> when I asked Willie, he was like, I don't know. I don't know freaking purple or something. Purple, <laughs> purple and yellow. <laughs> what, color, what color is the bag that the alcohol comes in? Yeah. That color. I'm telling you, you got to redo it and give him a whale jumping. Make the whale purple with a yellow background, and he'll be happy. Well, I'm I'm getting better as I go. So so I feel like people are going to be mad because like the first emblem I made for somebody was just their name, a different color, and then like I made Pins one, and it was his name inside a halo ring. And he's very and, proud of that. Pins is extremely proud of that. But your shout outs. Awesome. What's your shout outs? My <laughs> shout outs. My shout outs. Uh, Justin. Five. Justin, because he makes me want to be a better man. No, that's those are Willie's shout outs that he didn't read. Yeah, he skipped um, over the shout out to the hunters, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you two understand. That. Um, told you. We told you he doesn't read show notes. Yes, this is. I love it because I had someone else in there screwing with him, too. Um, yeah, it's big shout out to DOD Chatter White crew. Great group of guys. We're, we are uh, few, but we are fierce. Um, giant shout out to Shin Malfour. Uh, keep your head up, bro. I know, I know you had it going on. Uh, and I'd like to give big Shin shout outs. Had yeah. it going on. <laughs> I like to, big shout out to our guest from last week, Pins Knowledge Bomb Halo, uh, and our wonderful guest from this week, Miss Bell Bunny. Um, I, it's it's great to have some people come in here and class up the joint from time to time. 
Um, that is a very true statement. I don't it's, know if I classed it up. Oh, I made it oh yeah, you did. Comments. Yes, no, you did great. And uh, also, lastly, I always do the most shout outs. This is what I'm known for. But uh, my lower band peeps, keeping it real. We got some new ones too. Um, yeah, we did. We got like, maybe. Maybe one day I'll get so together that I will be able to mention the new ones each week. Um, but uh, if you did just join, just jump right in there. Nobody knows anything, so don't be scared. Yeah, um, that is a very true statement. We may anyways, sound like we know what we're talking about, but it's just it's just blind confidence. Yeah, for the yeah. most part, I for one am very stupid. So <laughs> if you can, t- you can just talk with me. I'm challenged. <laughs> Uh, yeah, <laughs> great episode. So, in just just a real quick shout out, um, I'm I'm absolutely having a blast over in the Destiny lore subreddit. Um, me and another user, I think it's Captain Kex, uh, had an just amazing conversation. I I try to put up our topics every like Thursday or Friday over there just to get their opinions on topics because they sometimes have really cool perspective perspectives. Gosh, it's really late perspectives that I don't have. Um, just the same reason that we do in the chat. Um, but they're, they just, they genuinely usually surprise me. And he, and this individual has continuously, every time we put a post up there, you know, I get like a four paragraph response from them and they're just very helpful and they're very amiable about conversations and stuff like that, which if you've been in Reddit, you understand that that is a rarity that I will treasure immensely. So a giant shout out for that one. And then Unisys, he was floating around in the chat over here on Twitch. Um, just thank you guys again. We got featured last week on the Destiny Lord um, subreddit, and we're we're helping them kind of start a. It's not really a wiki, but it. I think it's kind of an embedded wiki onto that. Um, and we're kind of we we kind of got a couple sneak peeks to give them some feedback on that, and it looks like it's going to be a pretty awesome awesome thing so if you haven't already checked out destiny lore subreddit and you're interested in the destiny lore that is a place to go and just just ask questions so with that being said you guys have a good night and we'll all see you next week